<laughs> you just okay. go into settings. It's the very first it's thing in amazing. settings. Um, All right, we are live. It is O T N G session forty eight. Tonight we've got Ethan, Peter, and Tom, Mike. Uh, we are playing <laughs> the, our second session of oh. Rob Kuntz. Dark Druids. Also known as the Mean Trees. Also known as Mean Trees. <clears throat> oh. When last we had left our heroes, there was a request by the Scions of Kilbronis to find some dark and dangerous disturbance in the Fang Forest. Our heroes had followed a map out to this region and, the f and their first encounter was with some enraged trees. I sense a disturbance I'll, in the forest. I will leave it there if any of you want to pick up as a recap. Um, we, did we take down all the trees? Except for the no, big ones. No, because we, yeah. We're uh, trying to befriend the big ones still. Oh, okay. that's right. Okay. Um, the last thing that had happened to close the combat was... Slan Nasha had played the horn. <sighs> right. And that's where the and that's where the issue ended. And that's where the issue ended. That's where the yes, right. That was the last panel of the issue. Exactly. It just feels like we're in an issue of a heavy metal magazine. One of the other key events that had happened besides this huge uh, this fight amongst the trees was Cindella had snuck <laughs> into the a ceremonial circle. Mm -hmm. where there are runes carved onto a tree, um, glowing runes, and a and a black dagger plunged into the trunk, the base, the trunk of one of these trees. And Cindella had tried; she had retrieved the dagger from the tree and then tried to remove the runes, only to be blasted and then marked with one of these runes in the palm of her right hand. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had that'll, that'll leave a mark. <laughs> That's I think so. Hurt. Did, did you take any damage from that? I don't remember if I had. Uh, I don't. I think I did take damage. Let me double check. Maybe you're just embarrassed. Well, I'm hoping that the rune is like a protection rune. Mm. Yes, I'm hoping it's like damage. a temporary. I'm hoping it's took, like a temporary tattoo. Mm. I took eleven damage. Ouch. 11 damage. Did I heal you? <laughs> Not yet. So let Not me just yet. finish the recap about that. Um, it burns. It in it uh, it hurts. We'll talk more about that. Okay. Later. Uh, I just wanted to remind you of that occurrence. Oh. I definitely have not forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> Nor will I allow you to. <laughs> Hopefully. I'm tr still trying to figure out how to most effectively keep notes and track of your guys' characters. I've been kind of just doing it on the fly in my memory, as it were. Mm -hmm. That's not working that great. I mean, well, other than having to ask you guys, what was that magic item? What is? What did I tell you it? This this boon did or whatnot. What is it? Oh, I've never oh, seen one before. I, I no one mark has. Down on my character sheet that there is a <laughs> very painful mark on her hand. Good, and it's as, it's it's in fact it it it's as if you had closed your fingers on an open palm. The rune crosses your fingers and even over your thumb. It's a large marking. Ooh. Oh. Sort of like Indiana almost. Jones, the, the guy who burned that one into his hand and they made a almost, mold from it. Almost a brand, right? Mm -hmm. And it's that same glowing, orange glowing rune, runic mark. Oh, okay. that, this is, this is it's not. A curse. <laughs> it's a curse. <laughs> oh, it's not going to be a good thing, is it? Probably not. But, I mean, she survived death three times in one adventure. Why don't we go for four? Slanagash and Arkor are communing with the tree, and they it suddenly turns and lumbers off into the glade there to your west, and they disappear from your sight <clears throat> as you're 
of resting, recovering, and recuperating from the fierce battle, the flung lightning bolts by the shirtless wizard Gib. <laughs> I told you it's just like an issue of heavy metal. It, this is this my mind is an issue of heavy metal. I can't help <laughs> it. My father branded me that way when I was a child. <laughs> With I told you dream. how he used to read heavy metal to us. Yeah. Yeah. When, as bedtime stories when we were little kids. <laughs> Yeah, he I used still to have. Do different, he used to do different voices for the characters. It was amazing. Oh, I can totally see that. Yeah. I can see Rodney doing that. So the tree ran off to the left? Off to, the... yeah, off to the uh, east there. Pardon me. Oh, to the east. The other, okay. the, other, okay. the other west. The other, the other and west. And our friends decided yeah. they would run off and go follow it. Frolic right, in the woods. right. And they they sort of fade from view and um, exit stage east. <clears throat> Um, uh, Nils won't be joining us tonight, so we're just mm. working his character out of the stories. Uh, That's there right. are when two... he comes back, he'll have answers that we don't have. Mm. There are two blasted and wrecked um, trees that you had been battling, mm -hmm. and Cindela has found this clearing, sort of the remains of what could be construed as a as a campsite, perhaps, and three huge uprooted. Uh, disturbances in the in the dirt where it looks like trees could have once been stood but now they're now they're absent as if some great hand had just reached out and plucked them out root and all or they or they pulled themselves out and came and tried to kick our and, asses and tried to yeah mm. exactly i am going to say a blessing over the uh the charred remains of these poor trees that we did I not wish to kill mm. right we're out of combat Yes. We are out of combat, yes. And okay. let me see. It is it's That's what I no, shut up, Siri. That's what I figured too. It is <laughs> let's say eight it's still pretty early. Eight thirty AM uh let's see, when did we start our session? We'll call it eight thirty AM. Yeah, because we just the, got across uh, the top of the screen and then boom got our asses kicked. That was it. <laughs> on the eleventh day of the broken star, there is a plus one spell check modifier in place for the day. What will you do? Well, I um, well, I, I'd like to go out and follow my friends in the tree, but I think it's better we stick to the path at this point because we have a mission, and I have a feeling our friends will well, be back. Um, Gib, uh, so where's are we going to go? Find Cindella, or does she come back? So oh, she kind of like on. clasping her hand, like how? Yeah, I'm going to go do some healing on her, her. staggering so, so out, Gip, from, yeah. staggering out from the glade there to Gip the. Gibbs should check out those runes that were burnt that are burning in the tree and exactly. see if exactly. So we're, that's why we're not. Mm. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, so Gibbs going to take a look at at both runes and see if he can figure out anything sure which one would you like to start with <clears throat> my hand uh well the, the <laughs> hand first yes okay. that's the more important one uh, what is your intelligence modifier uh, tico uh, bless it <laughs> it's uh, a plus two okay go ahead and roll it at, at plus two hmm. and if if i'm capable of healing her Cindella's hand. Mm. That would be two dice. Oh, for the uh, nineteen that you threw. Yeah, go ahead yeah. and do your uh, your. Okay. Cool. Two hit dice there, Cindella. Yay! Give yeah, it is a it's a demonic mark. That's all you can tell. It does require. Uh, it's going to require further study, certainly. Um, and would he extrapolate this is the same uh, same thing as on the the tree, basically, within that roll? one and see if there's anything. Yeah, the, do you, uh, I'll let you. Uh, you can have another. There are more runes okay. and markings on the tree, so you can also take a second roll against those. Okay. Uh, it is. So, he, but, yeah, he explains that, mm. that it's basically demonic in nature. Mm. Clearly, yeah. Uh, Unnatural and and um, tell that to the to the priestess as well. 
Okay, perfect. Um, and and he actually uh, asks, uh, what's the name of the priestess again? Gerda. Gerda. Two two weeks and it's all gone. Well, that's right. That's oh, right yeah. there though. That's why we have the character names down on the on, yeah. on the roll twenty? Oh yeah, yeah. Sort so, of helps so, with that so reminders. Uh huh. Gib, Gib asks Gerda if if um she could look at it as well. Oh, absolutely. And try mm. to uh. Make make some heads or tails since it's so unnatural of a of a. Yeah, we work we work together well. Uh, sure. Why don't Gerda? You look at you. You have one look at um, Sindela's hand, and it it doesn't it doesn't resonate with you. But maybe these maybe the markings on the tree will. Okay. Um, so okay. when you so approach can... the tree, it's very similar. I think we, what did we say those trees were, Gerda, the, the ones that, that had attacked you? What, what Didn't you say they were they... larches? Larches. No, yes, they were larches, though. Um, and there is another large larch tree. And this larch tree um, has all of these markings on it. Um, it's been, it's, and it's, and it's withering. Um, the, the the branches are drooping and the and the leaves are dropping from this larch tree uh, that's marked with these ruins. You take one look at it and you know that this is something unnatural being being uh, some unnatural rites being performed here upon this tree. Larch. Um, did we happen to so notice Gibbs, any similar yeah, ruins on the trees we burned? The ganders. I, and you and Gibbs study this tree. Carefully. Hey guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna re-sign in because I'm just breaking up like a ton. I can barely hear you guys. How many okay. other do you have any other apps running in the background or anything? Or I don't think so. I'm not downloading anything. Okay, you might want to check, but drop the hangout and rejoin. I will wait for yep. you. Let's I would see like to see works. if I can either use neutralize poison disease or restore vitality on the tree. Okay, good. Let's wait for Mike and then we'll um we'll pick certainly. That up. <clears throat> I don't want him to mi miss those opportunities for No, I thought I'd get my this way I'm not interrupting anybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not gonna do I just want you to know what's going on. Yeah, I'm wondering if there were similar runes on the trees that just got fried to a crisp. Or I these runes shared, caused the trees to do it. I just <laughs> shared into the chat a link to a larch tree so that we can all have a, a better idea of what that looks like. Which chat? The Hangouts or the... The Hangout chat. Oh, I guess I could do it in the Roll20 chat, too. That might be better. Oh, there I see. There's something in... Thank you, Tico. I want mm -hmm. attention. <laughs> Mike, welcome back. Um, yeah, so Gibbs gonna uh, give an examination of the runes. Okay. I.e. roll. Okay, great. Let's Why see. Can I never the find anything working, in chat? The two of you working together. <clears throat> are you in the Hangout chat or the Roll Twenty chat? Well, I'm looking in the Hangout chat. I can never find anything. Mm. But I, I will use the one in the Roll Twenty because Twenty chat. Oh, bad roll. <clears throat> um, yeah. He's just having a really hard time. Yeah, these these runes it's look backwards and upside perfect. down to you. They're not the way they should be, you know, in in normal in a normal runic pattern that you're more familiar with. Right. They're twisted. Uh, Gerda, I'll give you a roll, but shift down. Uh, okay, so that would be, be a sixteen. Yeah. Any plus? You can add your intelligence if you have. Well, actually, apply your intelligence to this because it is a sort of a knowledge, not so much as a personality. Uh, Charismatic yeah. influence over this. Intelligence thing. is a 12, so no plus, no, no minus. Mods, yeah. yeah. Straight. It's all right. Uh, four. 11. Yeah, but a four on the. Oh, on yeah. The, I'm the sorry. I just saw the die. The so four is no good. I think I think that might actually I should just throw a handful of dice to the table, or whatever dice she throws, it puts the number that it actually rolled. It that, unfortunately the roll twenty engine's not that sophisticated. Yeah, it's fine. Would, I like it. Yeah, it's working. 
Sorry. Well, it's early in the it's early in the adventure. We're really it easily is. confused. Yeah. So mm -hmm. this is you have you've never seen markings like this before, Gerda. Um, the only thing that you can tell is that they're unnatural. That's and uh, and Gib has determined that they're demonic in a, some sort of uh, demonic Ooh. mark. I think that's about. What's your? That's about the best that Gibbs gotten. Oh, we're you can continue to study Garrett's. Uh, sorry, yep. you can continue to study Sindela's hand day over day, but this is, um, but it will take time, study, and uh, reflection okay. to really understand it. <clears throat> well, sure. on the bright that's side, Sindela is that's chaotic. So potentially, finding herself in the service of a demon wouldn't necessarily be the worst thing in the world for her. There's power there, <laughs> truly. There is. Yeah. Um, ask Ridian how that works out, but you mean <laughs> he is he's happy in retirement. The other thing that you recovered from this clearing, Cindela, was the dagger. Mm -hmm. That strange, um, almost flint-like dagger, but it has a some sort of quality of steel. Um, it. It's, it's long, um, and it's more of a. It's not really a weapon and not really a tool. It's 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 you know like a tool would be like a working knife, you know, to clear brush or Is it, skin an animal. Um, and it's not a weapon. It's not a fighting weapon because it doesn't really have a a cross guard and things like that. That or a, and a heavy pommel to balance it. Does Gibbs sense magic on it? Mm, is it magical? I don't know if you can hear Mike. I I do. He, Mike, can you give me a microphone check? <laughs> I'm Mike? not hearing Mike. I heard him, and then I'm breaking up mm, a lot. What? There somebody he Somebody said my name. Yeah, we were just looking for a microphone check. Could you give us a one, two, three, four? One, two, three, four. Cool. I Thank don't know you. why this is going on. My internet seems to be working in other means, but for some reason, you guys are really breaking up and going out a lot. Hmm. Weird. What do you have your bandwidth set to on the uh, so just audio? Just audio alone. So that should be help mm -hmm. helping in the situation. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, we'll stick with it as long as we can. Um, yep, it is what it is. Sorry about that, guys. All right. It's all right. We're in the forest. Yeah, okay. That's pretty stupid. Is What's the? Does anybody know on a PC? Um, there's a, um, you know, a, a, a word you could put in. It's whatever in the search that allows you to see basically what's everything is running. Oh, Normally it's called, not, the, it's not called the task task to manager. To it. It's called the task manager. Say that again. Task it, manager. It, I'll put it in the chat. <laughs> Something else that's that. I wonder if it's your mic. I don't think so. I think it sounds more like a bandwidth issue. Well, you guys are smarter you know, than I am. I'm deferring. You guys to you. are totally coming in and out. Yeah. Do you want to try joining the Hangout? And I don't know phone? why. Do you want to? This happens in something. It. It's just a you know, thing. Say that again. I'm typing to you in the chat. Yeah. No, I don't. I don't want to do that from my phone. Okay. Uh, yes, it is magical, but it's not a low grade magic. It's not it's it's barely perceptible in its um in its magic. Why don't you make a roll for me, Mike, if you can determine the quality of its magic? A D twenty, please. Add your intelligence. Fourteen. Are you uh, plus two? Or plus three. For intelligence two. Okay. Fourteen. Yes, Sindela, there is a, um, this is a, 
is in, in a sense a, a lucky charm, a charm um, that provides a luck bonus, a luck bonus that you can expend even against luck rolls. And it has <laughs> two points of luck that you can expend in this way. Hmm. But when you expend it, you have to hold the knife and you have to express it in some way. <clears throat> we'll deal with it when that that comes. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, the right character's got it. What will you do? Oh, Gerda, I had heard that you wanted to try one of your spells on this tree. Right. Which one would you like to invoke? Hmm. Let me double check. Because if you do well enough, we can work on magical things. So I have, they're both level two, restore vitality and neutralize poison slash disease. Hmm. So I'm thinking the neutralized poison slash disease might be the best thing to try here. Hmm. Miller Senior, hello. How are you? Yeah, I'm here. Well, it's nice to have you, Congress. Yeah. You were with us last session, weren't you? Uh, I think so. I don't think you guys have played since I was last here. Yeah, last week or two weeks ago. And we have just finished clearing up after the fight with the with the walking larch trees, <clears throat> and. Gerda is about to try a ritual on the tree that is marked with runes. Sindela has been branded with some sort of demonic mark. That's all the wizards were, wizard was able to determine, and no one can make sense of the runes that are that have been carved into this tree. All right. she, found her true Sindela name. has found a charm, uh, <laughs> some sort of charmed weapon, the black dagger, which was plunged into the base of that tree. She's that pretty happy about it, let's be honest. <laughs> is she right. talking to it? Is she whispering to it? Not yet. Not yet. No, but you haven't <laughs> seen the dagger for a while. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Okay, so this does not include the days plus one. So I rolled a 19. Excellent. Um, 19. The cleric retards the subsequent effects of one poison or disease that's affecting the target and removes the remaining dosage or effect from the target system. In addition, any effects suffered already are reversed over the same time frame under which they were first suffered. However, a creature that has already been killed by the poison or disease is not brought back to life. Okay, so the when you cast this spell, it fades the, the glowing orangeness of it fades away to just the raw wounds on the tree itself. <laughs> mm, okay. So maybe the tree might be able to recover. Possibly. Could you give me another D20 there or another spell check like you just did? It, it threw an odd result to the chat, but... Um, yeah, I, I was using the spell check button in the character sheet. Yeah. So it should be plus seven and then add one more be for the day. It's adding seven twice. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, I see that. Well, then I won't use the spell check. I'll figure that out. Thanks later. for the fast maths, Ethan. <laughs> yeah. Young brains. Young engineering minds. Clearly not any of us. What will you do? I think we need to head south. Hammy is the marker on the map. You may move him. I will remove the offending tokens 
of the walking larches. The lurching larches. Lurching larches. I can't help it. I grew up reading Marvel comics. <laughs> So to the south, you can see <clears throat> this sort of this crest, this this hill before you. The path winds up to uh, ascends that hill to the south, and it's kind of marked out there on the map. Hopefully, you can make some sense of what's being displayed there. So is it going up or going down? Up. It's ascending. It's ascending. Okay. Damn it, we should have checked the campsite more to see if it gave any clues to as to who was there. Sorry, I oh, wasn't there, thinking. There was a there was a a body, if I recall correctly, wasn't there? There was a body. Sandella? Yes. <clears throat> a, a, a body in black. In mm -hmm. black, um, in like a black tunic and and matching uh, material trousers trousers of a matching material is that right the trousers and the tunic matched correct i was trying to find a more descriptive word for cloth or something that body had uh looked like it had been battered with um a huge heavy club Pumped I'm sorry, guys. I got pump. dropped. Um, hey, welcome back. What? What? I got dropped when you said we were just. Uh, you were describing something. Was, if you don't tell me what I was describing, I can't restart the description. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it was just past um, the uh, the rune um, decreasing in in glowing. Ah, okay. Mm. Right. Not much. Now we're looking at the body. Right. You had found a body also in this clearing wearing a, a dark black tunic and uh, trousers of a matching material. Okay. Ninjas. Uh, this body looks like it, it's clearly dead. This corpse is dead. Looks like it's been hammered by a large heavy club repeatedly. There are no remaining marks or identifying features of the corpse other than its pulpy mass and its it um, smashed by a tree. <laughs> hmm. Nothing gets by a really rough club. We can tell by the smashed bird nest in his beard. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Does um are are his hands visible? Uh, they are. They're broken and and mashed. And is there um a rune like that on Cindella in the um, palm? Make a luck check. <clears throat> Good thinking, Gib. Uh, the hands are still oh, the hands yeah. are still intact, um, ex especially uh, uh, the the matching one, the matching right one that Cindella has her rune um, branded on. There is no matching rune on this corpse's hand, either mm. of them. Hmm. 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 You had also kind of peered down the path to the south, and you saw that path climbing a hill, uh, a very steep hill. Um, is there anything to search on this body? You can search. Searching it finds um, nothing, a pouch that, that's empty, mm -hmm. uh, maybe a few nibbles of cheese, but that's about all. So does the, uh, the body does have a empty sheath on its belt. Hmm, a dagger sheath that would fit the yeah, exactly. knife that um, that <laughs> Sandella now bears proudly. Proudly? What dagger? I have no idea what you're talking about. Well, the one you're forgetting about, you can put in this sheath. So there yeah. you go. <laughs> the one that's in your hand hiding behind your back. <laughs> Horse is like that one behind your back. <laughs> in your boot. Mm -hmm. So uh, could we we could maybe extrapolate that this was the one that caused the curse to go off, but then the tree uh, killed it for whatever reason. I, I I agree. Sounds like it. 
I'd be willing to bet that the curse was doing something for the to animate the larches, and the treant, which just wandered off with our friends, um, killed this guy trying to protect the larches, and was somehow affected. Or I'm just kind of back, or backfired on itself. Yeah. Or the uh, treant decided that we were friends of the guy who was just messing with his buddies. So we can't say we blame him. Sure, we can. We can blame him. No, no he's wandered off nicely now with Nils's character. So <laughs> awesome. Of course, turns into yeah. a wanders with trees. That sums up Nils. He couldn't make it tonight, so we just read him out of the scene at the beginning. Oh, I thought <laughs> it was perfect for it. Well, it, it, it solved the problem of the treant, exactly, because she blew the horn. They took off together, which means when he does come back next week, he's going to have information on stuff. And, you know, it works. Sorry. No, no. no. I, I just like dis and nils. Well, who doesn't? <laughs> Are you are you painting tonight, Brian? Or are you worrying about your construction? Uh, no, I'm worrying about the dead battery in my daughter's car. Mm. That's where I was. So, does anyway. it keep on draining? Uh, it's a Prius. It just died today on them. So Ooh. I think it's just I think it's just a dead battery. But Priuses are weird. So, mm -hmm. so who knows? Um, so, do we want to move on through the path? I think we do. Okay. Nothing else to um, observe. We can think of. Nothing to see here. So as, you get, as you're kind of moving down the path here, and you can see the the ridge line sort of obscures your vision from being able to see much further beyond it. Though you do notice all around the path, I'm going to ping the table for you all. On the edges of the path here are <clears throat> um, fragments of wood, almost like somebody had taken a a woodcutter's bundle and strewn it about. Maybe even three or four of these bundles. And at the at at the at the apex of the path, there as it crosses over the ridge, you can see fluttering slightly in the wind a black rag. Is it? Oh, that's not going to be good. <laughs> what will you do? We never go to Disneyland or anything like that, do we? No. Oh, that's we've a been to the land of the fairies. Oh, that, that, that's a flayed skin in the wind. You know it is. Oh, and those sticks are going to come to life and kill us. Oh. But you're a cleric. You can turn them. So it's like a wooden golem, you think? Maybe. Skeletons made out of wood. I don't know. Okay, so that or or they took out a couple of woodcutters and these guys and those guys threw their bundles when they were running from the trees. Yep. Does the uh, wood look? Uh, um, does it have a sense of um, being magical? Uh, you want to try to reach out with your mind and see if you can perceive some magic from well, this distance. It's about sixty <laughs> feet away. These strewn, these strewn. Um, yeah, sure. Yeah, Gib Gib will do that. These strewn branches and logs. But do they look like? Do they look like cut logs, or does it look like it was splintered apart? Like it's a, hard to see. It's hard to see. It's like the mists are blowing, and it's. Do it's, not leave it's the like, path. <laughs> do not it's like, get it's off like the boat. Sixty feet away, you know, it's, it's, it's a little hard to discern. Glittering. But yeah, um, you can try. Sure. What do you tell me? What you're trying to do, Gib? <laughs> uh, exactly that. Just trying to see, just like he sees anything else, you know, potentially magical, is the same thing. Okay, so you're trying to reach out with your mind Gerda, and discern just, some magic. Yeah, Gerda just said, you know, maybe these sticks come to life. Sure. And, you know, flail, okay. flail things. Go ahead and roll a d20 and add your... Well, Actually, I I'll roll a d20 for you. Oh, there, there you go. go. <laughs> Hammy has a tendency to assume everything we run into is lethal and hostile. Because it usually oh, so, is. So Hammy's, Hammy's with us? I didn't realize that. Mm. Well, actually, if Brian's oh, yes, joined I us, think... Hammy, Hammy would step no, out if Brian. No, 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 no that's fine, because you're six, so that's fine. We'll take four to six. You're fine. 
You are a large party of six tonight. <clears throat> Versus a well, I think sense, more like five. Yep, you, know, you don't sense any magic from these um, these strewn branches and logs. But it's like okay. as if again, like two or three large woodcutter bundles had just been scattered around the um, around the right around the, around the path that's sort of climbed. So yeah, yeah, so if it was a tree that fell all apart, it would still look like you know just a big bunch of tree parts. Right. right. This looks like like you're saying a bundle of sticks used for fire or you know something maybe bigger. Right. And and you can also see a uh, like what seems to be like a black rag or something kind of at the, at the at the peak here of this yeah at the apex of the, kind of at the apex. of the uh, of the path which that is bothers me more so, than the wood can you can you ping where the where the wood is sure That's actually good. why don't i just mark it on the map okay and you can mark where the rags are too sure yeah would, don't well, use the sharp no, no yeah 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 he there's some misleading about rags that's what they look like yeah, that's I think what, it's a that's flayed what I want skin. You to We've been like. told of that they look like <laughs> rags. I think it's a flayed skin or a wraith. The, it's, it's oh no, he said that they were rags. So let's just go get the rags. <laughs> I want that. I'll pick up the rag, and the rag is what could go wrong in a dungeon. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Whatever. Oh, the, what could possibly be and, lethal here? The ra yeah, 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 the rag is black. Hang on, let me. Yeah, I, I saw it when and, you marked it. Who Mark picks it up a duck in a dungeon? And shocking pink, but it's really black. Well, if it's a RuneQuest dungeon, there could be a lot well, of ducks. I, I say oh, so we, it's actually on the path, right? So we're going to come up to it if we stay on the yeah. path. So yeah, I thought it was off percent. the path. Okay. It's, okay. it's on the edge of the path. I mean, okay. Here, I'll gotcha. move it to make so it. This, path, path, path. So this rag is like on a stick of some type, supposedly. Fluttering in the wind. Like fluttering it's, sort of, in the wind. It's, it's like on the, it's like, you know, like if you were in a meadow or some, something and somebody had dropped their picnic blanket there mm -hmm. and it was just there on the, oh, okay. on the, on the so it's, it's not like on stuck on a stick or waving around like a flag or anything, but you can see oh, it sort of, got it. Yes. Know, sort of bubbling <laughs> a little bit. Or just as if yeah. like some yeah. magical creature that's like in a cloak or is like a corpse. On the ground. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, or like that, <laughs> or like a picnic, something pleasant. Mm. So I, have, I, have I, I um, Gib, Gib says to that we should maybe proceed very slowly and maybe like only go another twenty feet to see if something happens. Hammy um, likes oh, the idea of being cautious. Something, something stirs, and we're able to have some some time to deal with it. Okay, well, show me how where you move the party to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just maybe another 20 feet just another 20 Kirk. feet that is correct Kirk. actually 20 Kirk. feet that still that still leaves us uh should be another 40 feet 40 feet uh. <laughs> we're not a suspicious so, lot no so now, now and then gibbs really looking at the at that at that Piece of cloth or cape or or shadow monster. <laughs> Lethal Muppet, whatever. It's not very big. It's about the size of um Oh, it's not very big at all, in fact. It's not very big. You know, like 20, it's about the size of a uh this <laughs> all the words are disarming words. Yeah. I mean safe <laughs> words. No, it's my safe it's words. Like a, it's like a handkerchief. That's it is. Yeah. It's like a. It's that like a very, very large handkerchief that you just blow your nose into. Yeah, exactly. You know, like a fancy you know, like, cloth napkin, like twice yeah. the size. Of it. <laughs> okay. You know, just just like dragon size. That's all. About the same size as a person's chest skin would be if you peeled it off them and <laughs> stuck it on a stick. Uh, the other thing you notice as you get closer <laughs> and you see some of these pieces of wood, it looks like they've all been broken. Mm. Yeah, not cut, and some of them are are splintered and fragmented. Um, there are, and there are also some very small pieces, like like sliver size, like sliver size. Does it look like there was a trunk splinter well, that that had been broken apart, or was it mostly all like branches and upper trunks instead of 
or mm. yeah, make a luck check. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you do see kind of at the very apex, just beyond your your vision, a um, what looks like a very large chunk, uh, trunk, but just snapped in half and fallen off outside of your, like the trunk of a tree that had been broken and then mm. fallen beyond your line of sight. Mm. So kind about of how up, far away up, from sort the... Of up, sort of up Over here. Over 40. Okay. See where I'm pointing with the... Yeah. <clears throat> Um, okay. Okay. So Horace, let me make sure he has this before I actually. But yeah. So Horace is going to take his crossbow. Mm -hmm. He's going to take one of the bolts mm -hmm. and tie the end of his rope around it mm -hmm. and fire the crossbow at the rag. Okay. All right. That's sure. Cool. Go, Go ahead, ahead and, and, and like, reel it in. All right. That would be a heroic deed. Let's see um, if you can hit it. All right. That be the wrong command. <clears throat> there we go. Uh, ooh, you missed the deed. What the hell? I'll give it to you. Yay! Um, yeah. <laughs> Why did I even have you roll? It's so heroic, you could just do it. <laughs> and uh, it's just visually cool. Right. Um, though you only bring back a, f a scrap of it. That's 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 okay. the, that's the limiting factor with the low deed roll. Mm -hmm. um, so what happened when the, the arrow It just hit kind it? of comes apart as you're pulling it back towards you. And... and um, <clears throat> But locked on the head of the arrow is this black fabric. That's the word I was looking for earlier, material mm -hmm. fabric. Same fabric as we saw on the dead guy? Yes. In fact, it is the same fabric. Mm. I watch Project Runway. I watch Project Runway. I know what I, I don't know. Horace watch will remove the fabric and hand it to the wizard. <laughs> of course, he's our fabric expert. <laughs> you, might, you might actually like it, Peter. I like it because it's creative. Um, that's why I like it. It's, I like, a, good I watch it it's a good show. Well, and, here, yeah. and I hear they root for each other, which I like. I prefer that over people trying to fuck uh, each other. Uh, I wouldn't say they root for each other. Yeah, they get a little catty. Really? <laughs> oh yeah, oh, they're yeah. fashion designers. Yeah. Shocked, just shocked. I know, I know you're shocked. Sorry, Peter, to burst your bubble. Hey, Brian, you got here late, but I'm painting furniture. Ooh, is this furniture that I almost got into, but the train myself crate? out of? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, when you want a wizard study, spend twenty right. bucks get a wizard. I'm, study. I'm just grabbing a drink. You guys think about what you're gonna do, and I'll ask you when I get back. I think we should go to the top of the hill. Sure. I'll be right back as well. Two seconds. I'll wait here. <laughs> How's that painting up, Peter? Um, I, I posted on, um, on our, you know, our DOTT group. Um, mm -hmm. so far, what I painted. Oh, I see. So far, what I painted was a couple of, uh, I, I'm calling them market goods. There's like a barrel and apples mm -hmm. and potatoes. And, and I got a bookshelf. And I'm focusing on bookshelves because Sullen said he had a scenario he wanted to run that needed a library. Hmm. Okay. So I think we should proceed cautiously as well. But I think this was another tree that got busted apart or something like that. You were, were put up a fight. Yeah, I think you're yeah. right. There's definitely something bad going on, and I think someone is, is, is poisoning the woods, because you look around, everything seems to be dying. So I think somebody is doing something insidious, and uh, I sense a wrong that we must right. 
Or something doing you know, something there, wrong. There's a chance that like each one of these is a sacrifice to like go and um, poison yeah. the uh, the forest, and they just get maimed by the forest fighting back. But then you know they get poisoned as well at the same time. That's Interesting. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's what Gibbs like just like. That's what you're. Games. That's what you're playing with. Mm-hmm. That's still that's some potato off, chips. But... If the woods get destroyed, well, her new lands aren't going to have anything in them, so she's got to... <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's the... You don't want cursed lands. No. Oh, no, no uh, it ruins the resale value. It does. Ugh. Guys are awesome. <laughs> so, Brian, by the way, how is your other campaign going? Uh, and this needs to be restarted. We were cleaning up some side quests, so getting ready for season three. Doing a little bit of a pivot, talking to players. So we're, they want to do more exploration of the island, so we're going to do just uh, random adventures. And I'm throwing in a couple mega dungeons if they want to go wandering into those. Oh, so Nice. Sort of hex crawling. Basically hex crawling, but I've picked up some DCC and other adventures that they're going to just wander around. They really didn't explore much of the island, and I think they just want to check it out. I, I I get it. Okay, that's cool. Hey, I just need to know what you're going to do so that I can. Um, yeah, exactly. Prepare, so. it, gee, it's a hex crawl. Where can you go? Um, where can you not go? So, mm -hmm. so we'll work that out. And my half orc paladin is in a level four, so that's all I want to do accomplish. Yeah. Uh. Okay. All right. So, what are you guys doing? I heard approaching cautiously, but I didn't see. We want to hit the crest. We want to head towards the crest of the hill and approach the thing cautiously. You're just going to climb, climb the, climb the path. There. Sure. Yeah. All right. Fate favors the bold. Um, Does it though? <laughs> that's pretty easy to re-roll new, roll up new characters anyway. So. I'm. I, do you guys want to move? Do you want me to just move you, or what? Oh, are we not moving our token? Uh, yeah. Oops! Ah, too far. We've reached the edge of the world. Sorry. Yep. How's that? Okay, so we like crossed it. the edge of the. Why haven't you? Let me check my lighting there. Or we're we'll probably wearing sunglasses. <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Um, um, that. I told you guys somebody is that. fucking with the woods. See? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right that, there. there. There's a Cthulhu thing. Yeah, <laughs> fucking land octopus, whatever it is. It's not going to be good. All right. It looks um, oozy and deadly. Let's have a surprise roll. So as you guys climb the... Yeah, you, nobody's surprised. As you climb the <laughs> path here and cross the, the threshold of the of the of the rise of the hill, whatever mm -hmm. this thing is. Um, you see that these, it's as if uh, trees had just been splintered, smashed, and destroyed all around you. The littering of the of the broken limbs and trunks are are even greater at the at the crest of this tree. And bursting from the from the ground is a handout that I have to share with you. But wait, there's more. Wait, no. But there's more. <clears throat> you don't have to share. In fact, there are two. Good. And I'm just grabbing that handout for you now. I swear to God, you've got to watch Princess Mononoke before you finish this adventure. All right, I will. Show to players. Show to everyone. Ah! Don't go near that. Don't touch it. It's evil. All right. It's got my leg. It's got my leg. How about an initiative check, gentlemen? Let's let Horace do it. Horace? Yes. Yeah, you add your level. I know. Kind of have to beat a lot. Beat a lot. Oh, boy. No, not enough. No. See, there are one, two, three, four, five. There are exactly not, not six of you. Mm -hmm. 
Close. Six juicy tar. Gerda. The the this this huge root like tentacle bursts out of the ground and tries to entangle you. <clears throat> just like in the picture. Yeah, just like in the picture. This thing is huger. <laughs> it's huger. <laughs> <laughs> that's too huger. Mm -hmm. Oh man, that's huge. Ah, oh, it's ah! getting worse. <laughs> I'm not complaining. It just gets worse. <laughs> that's that's pretty big. So and it was easy to paint. It was it really it was, easy to paint. Yeah, super super quick paint job. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know what I'm casting as soon as I uh, if I survive this. Give me just a second while I do some quick calculations. <laughs> That's never as long good. As you take your time and make sure they're in our favor. Up. Uh, when are they ever in our favor? <laughs> oh, there it is. Okay, fine. <clears throat> and... To figure out how some way to do these calculations a little more automatically. I've got a little <clears throat> um, spreadsheet calculator, Brian, that I'm just punching in my AD and D1E to do a DCC mm -hmm. conversion. But I've mm -hmm. got to figure out a way to sort of do some of the revisions off of it. Uh, All right, yeah. here we go. This tentacle's like snaking around. Gerda's boot. It's your mm. armor class, Gerda. 31. Sorry, 20. 20. Make a luck check. Ooh. That's what? Not good. I don't want it. I don't want that's not good. <laughs> yeah, that's not Can good. Can I borrow the dagger? <laughs> <laughs> borrow some of Hammy's luck. I might that's have a, to. Hold that's on. A I ten. Think. What's Gerda's luck? I, it's less than that. Yeah, luck is one of my better stats. You have a luck of eight. So yeah, the tentacle rake, like just like it wraps around your boot and wraps around your whole leg, and you're just and you're thrown off balance, and it's dragging you towards the towards the um, towards itself. Towards the yeah, towards the center of this um, this this cruel beast. It's a sarlacc. It's a damn sarlacc. Can I cast a spell <laughs> before I'm sarlacc. swallowed by this car sarlacc? Sure. There's um. You, it's your guys' actions. That was it's a, that was it's, a, it's attack. <clears throat> All right. I'm casting banish. Banish. Uh, banish you. N n n Nineteen. Mm -hmm. So it goes off. What does it do? Oh, I forgot to invoke. Damn it. Mm. Got to pay attention to these things. It seems to help. You know what I mean? It usually does help. There it is. Level 2, 19. Um, for the next D6 turns, the target must make a will save to approach within 60 feet of the cleric. If failed, it cannot approach any closer than 60 feet, nor can it hurl... <laughs> Miss a weapon, speak in the cleric's direction, or otherwise take action against her. If forced within 60 feet, it takes D8 plus the cleric's level arcane damage each round. So the damage can kill the creature if it's reduced to zero hit points. If the spell is cast while the target is already within 60 feet, it immediately takes damage and is forced back 30 feet per round until it's at the outer perimeter of the spell's area of effect. Wow. Okay, powerful. So what I heard was that... You successfully banished it for D6 rounds. <clears throat> plus the cleric and level. Plus the cleric level. So you want to throw that D6 for me? No, oh, so, like so six, six rounds. rounds. So for six rounds, it's this um, this demonic beast is driven away from you. It has to make a will save every round in order to approach you. Is that right? Or I believe to avoid so. taking yep. damage. I think that was in the beginning of the description. Yeah, it must Mine make is... a will save to approach. 
if it doesn't, if it fails it, it can't approach. Um, if it does make it, it takes damage when it does. If it's forced within the 60 feet, it takes a D8 plus the cleric's level and damage. Gotcha. All which right. it's going to take immediately because we're in contact. Right. So why don't you roll that damage right now, and I'll make the will save to see if it can remain in your presence. Oh, oh good. Okay. So six points. Six points. And we're changing die color again. <laughs> the problem is using the same color as the creature. <laughs> well, that's true. You went green. Well, pre oh, let's see. Priestess of nature. Uh, let's go with blues. We'll see if that works better. That's a nice blue. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> How many hit points did you do to it? Six. And hammy shoot his crossbow. Oh, wow. Okay, it's got a big hit point bar. Holy crap! <laughs> well, you only did six. But at least you did six. So if you did hey. six, percentage-wise, it has about 70 hit points. <laughs> Math. Horror sound it suddenly sounds a lot smarter. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's his warrior intuition speaking. Mm. That's it, yeah. <laughs> I think it has three, three or mighty blood. Hit points. One for each arm. Ah, right. And now the will save against a 19, correct? <clears throat> correct. Mm -hmm. You see Horace rubbing his chin. It Ooh. saves. <clears throat> oh. It's got a pretty big will. I think we have to convince it otherwise. Well, but okay. it, it, it's going to take damage as it attacks me. That's okay. I mean, I'm. Wait, mm -hmm. hang on a so second. Is, is it still holding hold, on? Hold on, right? hold on a second. Um, let me let me make a quick calculation. I think it's going to still succeed. Mm. Yeah, that's a 19. Make a luck check, Gerda. It's on the cusp, and I don't want to figure out the cusp, and it's going to depend on your luck check. Does that make sense? Yep. I have a luck of eight. Oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah. yeah well, burn some luck. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. You can't burn luck no. on those luck checks. I forgot. No. Unless Except I have that for, dagger. Unless you have dagger. dagger. <laughs> Wait, let me change my die color again, because that's just not a good, that's not boding well at all. <laughs> I like it. It's like reaching into the dice bag and just getting That's it. it. That's yeah. it. Don't like these dice. Change out the dice. We were in Ashland, and uh, Jenna, uh, Heather's daughter found the game store, of course. There's dice oh, awesome. the game store. But... um. She decided she wanted to spend some of her money there, and she's like, "I need, I need to get some dice." And Heather goes, "Don't you have dice?" She goes, "Well, I need some more dice." And Heather goes, "You do?" I said, "I thought you were a gamer, honey." And she looks at me. I said, "I understand what Jenna's saying. Let her buy the dice." And Jenna looks and goes, "Thank you. You need dice." <laughs> I go, "Already a gamer." I mean, those are dice. the special Ashland dice. Is she going to come yes. to the Big Bad Con? Um, I don't know yet. I don't know yet. I've mentioned it, so I think it has to do with grades. Ah. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so is it still holding on to her? It is, but it's like it's smoldering. Mm. And every round it needs to make this check and it needs to <clears throat> make this check on a 19. Uh, so it's not fleeing, but it's still getting hit, right? Mm -hmm. It's it taking our king damage. It's going to flee, correct? Correct. Well, then can I use my uh, I guess I use my next action to smash the thing to try to get get loose but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. hammy's taking a shot what's hammy doing shooting it with a crossbow okay uh i'm gonna assume you're not... <laughs> no he's not <laughs> uh, make a luck check hammy <laughs> that was it uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> nice try make it okay so um he he fires a, his his crossbow at one of the um, one of the writhing tentacles that's near you, not the one that you is dragging you. Who's next? Horace. What's will Horace doing? Run in and try and cut the vine that's 
holding that's wrapped around Gerda. Oh, that sounds like a mighty deed. Let's see if that's mm -hmm. successful. And you're running into running, you're charging, you're closing the distance. You're running to Gerda's aid, right? That's exactly right. All right, Horace. <clears throat> And 11. My deed went off, so I probably got there. You, you, yeah, you got there, and you're like hacking at this root, but it's huge. It's like it's it's bigger than your torso is. Oh, but I have a second attack. Oh, you do. And I use the same deed. You do use the same deed. Let's see how. So you do. Plus six. Seventeen. Mm. You need a twenty. Oh, oh uh, you burn any luck? No, I ha he has no luck to burn. <laughs> you could sever the tentacle. Were you just yet? Does Hammy want to burn two points of luck? I'll burn two points of Hammy's luck. Yeah. All right. Get her out of there! And it's like this, oh. just this. Ch I mean, it's this chopping, like. <laughs> 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 So he does Sever damage, the correct? How much damage do you do? That is going to be D8 plus 7. 11 points of damage. All right. That's a good chop. I think I got about 16% of its hit points. <laughs> <laughs> Who's so, least, so Gerda is free now? Gerda is free. The tentacle is still sort of wrapped around her, her leg, and um, it's smoldering. Mm. Uh, Horus is amongst the melee. Hammy's still at the, at the edge of the path, firing his crossbow. What's coming? Mm -hmm. It's going to regret this. I'll go into melee. Oh my gosh! Congress <laughs> charges the melee. Make sure you go. Hold on, hold on, hold like on, hold on. on. Let, let, let Gib what? cast some Wait. spells. Okay. okay. What's Gib gonna do? Gib's okay. gonna cast a uh, lightning bolt. Lightning okay, yeah. bolt. Sweet. Gib yeah. <sighs> so that's a uh, ten uh, plus five. That's sixteen. Um, I think it. Oh, is that's what the plus one, right? <clears throat> yeah, plus one, plus plus five, and then don't forget your intelligence. So I think that brings you to an eighteen, correct? Um, that sounds right. Okay. Yeah, target must be within one hundred feet and takes three d six damage. Nice. All right, roll your damage. Oh, wow. So the, I, it's like, a, I mean, you know, there's this, how does this manifest itself? Is there any, is there any so, mercurial magic um, that goes off from this thing? Uh, this one had no mercurial. Okay. And how does okay. it manifest? Do you remember? Let me think for a second. Brilliantly. <laughs> In a blinding flash. <laughs> flash of light. Uh, while you're thinking, while you're thinking about that, or checking your notes, Mike, um, the 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 feeble bolt of lightning that flies from your from your hands uh, mm -hmm. almost rebounds. Oh, that's right, that's right. Hold on, hold on, mm. hold on. I'm supposed to. So who's nearest me? That's right, Horace. Here's. Uh, let's see who's nearest. Who's nearest you? <clears throat> so Gib was at the back of the pack, as he's always going to be. <laughs> Um, Hammy's nearest you. Oh crap! Ah, right. Yeah. So we'll we'll declare that. That's fair enough. So, um, that so that that that's not the score yet. Score is not seventeen. One second. Um, I'm still at full hit points, so I should be able to take some. You drain hit points, right? Yeah. So, so all of a sudden, Hammy's hair starts standing up on end. <laughs> And he doesn't understand what's going on because because he didn't hear the he didn't get the memo from Geb. <laughs> and he's like, "Stay hey, back, little man. What's going on? What's going on here?" And all of a sudden, he feels like some like he's always he's petted cats before and gotten shocked here and there, but he all of a sudden goes, "Like what the hell?" And he takes three hit points of damage. Oh, and it's so like this powerful, yeah, this powerful. <clears throat> um, 
But does now Gib add that to his roll? Yeah, so that's a 19. That's a 20. <laughs> that's, or 21. Where, that's some serious static shock. No, so that so I, I got a um what was my first roll? I forgot already. Total of eighteen. That's an eighteen, so now it's a twenty-one. No, it's not it's not points. It's not added up for every for every two points, it's oh. uh, one. Is it rounded so up? Or one. Down? It'll but, be round um, down. So that would be to a to a eighteen. Uh nineteen. You were eighteen to start. Oh, so I'll go yeah. to a nineteen. Start. Okay. So the caster releases a single lightning bolt aimed at one target, which has line of sight. The bolt has a range of um, fifty feet from point of origin, mm -hmm. which can be anywhere from fifty feet. The lightning bolt does four d six damage. Okay, roll your so, damage. Or do you want to throw an extra d six? I'll let him reroll that shitty roll. roll. <laughs> Forty six. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, that's a better roll. It's early in adventure. We blow rolls, get our hands cut off. You know, that's what happens. It's called, called some mulligans. That's it. Um, um, did we do any healing before we started this session? <laughs> there was some healing. And I would the, have healed you if you needed the it. The bolt, instead yeah. of rebounding from this, from the, from the, from the mass of tentacles that you aimed it towards, sort of it gets absorbed into it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's not good. Or it's, it's resistant. Or resists lightning. So uh, Gib's gonna yeah. cast um, cast it again, going with the uh, D sixteen, the D lower D die. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I gotta pull up funky dice for this. So this will be for lightning bolt on his second spell casting. Oh, that looks bad. Uh -oh. <laughs> plus a eight is plus an 11. 11. But yes, Hammy has to take damage again. Oh, yeah. Roll the damage against Hammy. Um, well, if it doesn't go off, then how would he take the damage? Oh, well, it yeah, it won't, it won't manifest if it doesn't go off. Yeah. That's true. So uh, the mercurial does, won't have an effect. The mercurial can, can won't. Hammy spare, spare, <laughs> could you spare some luck so I could not, suck on your soul? <laughs> 11 is a loss. What's funny is that my dice is showing 13, but yeah. So if I, I I'm at an 11, so that's going to be a loss. Yeah, I can luck. I can burn. We're we're right now at full luck. Well, no, I burned burned two for horse there, but yes, I can afford it right now. Yeah. So if you could mm -hmm. if you could do that. Then give and them. and a hit point loss. You better you better appreciate Hammy. That's all I'm saying. Well, yeah. no, this is going to. Oh wait, so that's an 11, 12, 13. No, it's it still doesn't go off though. He just but hasn't lost it. the spell. It's just oh, okay. yeah. So, so okay. I don't lose the spell, but it doesn't go off. And Very at good. that point, Gibbs going to back directly away from the from the beast as well, but still, but still where, keeping. Where are you going? You want to put him. A mark on the map, or <clears throat> um, sure. Just so you don't go all beast mode. Just want to know where you are. All right, you see uh, that I think is Cindella in Congress. Mm -hmm. What will you Good do? Sure. I see the blue square. You're kind of like peeking over the edge of the. Of yeah, the I'm just giving my line of sight and still within <laughs> the hundred feet that this lightning bolt's going to go off. Okay. <laughs> very cowardly, but very wizardly at the same time. Are you are you still within range of your necrotics drained against your not at this particular moment? Okay. Oh boy. Congress, uh, Cindella, what will you do? Cindella will fire her crossbow at one of the tentacles that isn't near her group of friends. Okay. <laughs> A whirling mass of, of tentacles. Yes. Da, 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 let me. I haven't done this yet. She has a crossbow, but she's never used it. Okay. Hmm. You need a oh. you need a twenty. 
She will burn a point of her own luck. All right. Um, that's a whatever your luck die is, but that's enough to get you there. <clears throat> well, she right. got five points of luck. I rolled the wrong die, but it doesn't matter. She only needed one point. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So six points of damage. Six points of damage. That was the other reason the, I was willing where to the, the point uh, of luck. The, the, the tentacles that you strike, they go rigid. Interesting. And, and like this mass of tentacles just crashes towards you. They 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 burrow into the ground and then they're erupting out. They're like doing this weird porpoise thing. And Sindel is going to use her remaining action to run away like hell. Where are you running to? Um, back oh, over where she saw Gib running away. <laughs> She's like dives over to where, where Gib she is. Saw Gib running away. Okay. No, and her special uh, lucky ability is that she gets to run an extra five feet per luck mod. So she's actually running 40 feet. Okay. She can make it to where Gib is. Like, you know, hit the dirt besides Gib looking <laughs> over the rise there on the, the trail. <laughs> nice. Gib was not running. He was tactfully. Uh, he was just cautious, his cautiously distance. watching, <laughs> trying to Adela remove his running. proximity from his yeah. necrotic drain of his companions. Absolutely. I know, I know exactly what he was doing. <laughs> All right. Who I will warn you? Gib that Sindela is not at full hit points right now. <laughs> that leaves Congress. So Congress is going to pull out his spear. He doesn't have his shield. No spear. I mean, no shield, correct. No shield. So, oh, oh crap. Because so shields does, will be so sundered. Everybody, sundered re everybody, no, everybody in the party realizes that the trunks are going rigid. Yeah, they, it was like just that area where the crossbow bolt was struck. Mm -hmm. They Those like writhing roots or vines, they like all went ping, and then they turned in, in Sindela's direction and started moving that way, uh, like flopping in the ground and burrowing and yeah. Sorry, D6. Wow. That, is a that, was, that was a crappy roll. What did I actually roll on the die? A 12? An 8. Wow. Okay. That was a miss. That long shot. Or is maybe the only one hitting this thing when melee. Tried. Mm -hmm. That's with my D6 D D mighty D die. That didn't do <laughs> crap. So. All right. All right. Next round. Um, how about an initiative check, please? All right. Beat a lot. <laughs> ah! Just roll more than a lot. A ton? Yes. Mm -hmm. A lot plus one's enough. Oh, that's it. That. That's it. Ooh. Right, you guys win the initiative. <clears throat> Barely. Yeah. So either we're continuing this fight or we're breaking off and getting the heck out so of does, here. So does the damage take effect right now? From oh. the uh, from the banish, yeah. Go ahead and roll your damage for the banish there, priestess of oh. Elvar, and it will need to make a will check to see if it withdraws from you. Mm -hmm. There we so go. That's Thirteen. Let oh, me sorry. Five. It Here's plus five <laughs> is ten. I said D eight plus five. Yeah, so that's ten total. Yeah. So the um, the tentacles are shrinking back away from you. And Horus, who is in your close proximity, along with Congress. And I'm trying to move towards Sindela so it shrinks away from her, too. She's back oh, away. Oh, you're backing up to she, where, she's, where yeah, she and yeah, Sindela yeah, are at the edge I of the path. Yeah. Okay, all right. I'm trying to condense the party, I guess, is the way to put mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. are, you bringing the other, are you bringing the other uh, warriors that rushed to your rescue with you? Heck yeah. Are the technicals like, still moving towards Sindela's position? Uh, yes. Well, we'll, we'll kind of there. Okay. Yeah. What are the rest of you doing? I mean, okay. they were, they were racing towards you, you mm -hmm. know, but you guys are, that was, you guys are taking that, your action first. So, right. Um, yeah. Unless Horace will hold your action and see what happens. I... 
I'm going to try to cast a bolt of blue. Bolt of blue. If you Blo do, bolt from the blue. Um, if you do, you will drop your banish. That's true. Oh, oh I see. Yeah. That's right. Forget that. No, we're, we're keeping that banish. Up. Because you know, yeah, this no, is keep, keep the banish. This is like the down. chanting, and you know, tell me yeah. how you're keeping this banishment going. I see. It's like I see. It's like Doc Strange, where you have your hand symbol up, and you've got to, you know, mm. you've got to concentrate power into your hand and uh, hold that symbol. It's got that glowing little Steve Ditko rune thing glowing around it, just like in the movie. Cool. Cool. And uh, pulling out my war hammer with a big lizard on it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to go smash roots to go and help Sandella. So Gib's gonna go next, and he's gonna cast lightning bolt first one. All right. Go ahead and make your uh, yeah. spell check. I'll be right back, guys. All right. Just telling you, Sandella doesn't have a ton of hit point, so. Oh, I think the party's now moved back together. It sounds like we're moving back. Yeah. Okay. It does. I'm gonna say that that probably goes off, right, Mike? Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. It goes, goes off. off. That's Let's see. The closest one, closest party member to you is Horace. Thankfully. So that's a. 21, right? Uh, 21, yep. Yeah, so, okay. And, then, and how much damage does Horus take? Or, it, or do you want to roll it? Actually, no, I, I roll got it. it. Oh, yeah. Take six points of damage, Gib. <laughs> I mean, Horus. <laughs> so that's a three Okay, well, points. add three to your roll. Yeah. So that's so 24. That's 24. Chain lightning. <laughs> Caster releases a single lightning bolt that jumps between up to four targets. Can we count each tentacle as a target? <laughs> so this will be for like whatever is probably the tentacle that's in fifty feet of him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And each yeah, you can you can you can through. rain down a, a blast of chain lightning. So the first one must be within 50 feet, and each subsequent target must be within 30 feet of the prior target. Oh yeah, that's all. That's all. That's all reasonable. That's what's happening. So I, if I remember right, it's like 46, 3d6, 6, 2d6, 1d6. Yeah. yeah. Yep. 4d6 damage is the first one. Okay. Why don't you just go ahead and roll those handful of dice and give me, and we'll just sum it up as we go. So just do them all at once, or do the 4d6 at I first. Don't... That's four, seven, nine, ten d six. If you want to roll it, or you can roll okay, it. So there's the four. You can roll six, six more d six. Six more. Wow. Nine and twenty three is thirty one. Thirty two. Thirty two. Thank you. That's that's pretty impressive. So the um the, the lightning is like raining all around this and the and the and the tentacles are like are pulling into the ground and the lightning's hitting the dirt and <clears throat> huge clods of dirt are going up. Oh, took damage. That was a mighty blow. Who's next? Well, uh, then Gib's going to cast um, Ekam's Mask with his 16. Okay. Oh, one second. Getting dice ready. Oh. An 11 plus 8. 19. So yeah, so that'll go off. And so he's got plus 3 for the next... Uh, five turns or five, whatever's the shorter one. I always forget. Rounds. 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 Is there anything yeah. special that we should know about? Just the plus three now. That's the. So as far as his, you mean like his face? I mean, any special mercurial effects that we should know? No, about? that's that is the plus three that he gets off of that. Is the mercurial magic when it goes off, he gets plus three. Hmm. Mm. And it rat lasts for how many rounds? Five <clears throat> rounds. And what does he get out of it at that effect level? It's like a it's like a spell mod, like a plus. Well, so the Ekam's mask basically makes him hard to get hit by target by yeah. a melee. I mean, by ranged and by uh, looking at magic type gaze stuff. effects. Yeah, gaze mm -hmm. effects. But Mercurial magic gives me a plus three. So, 
So that's that why it's be, really useful. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's, that's really cool. Wild. That's cool. And the plus three lasts as uh, for this five rounds, right? As long as the X comes. Yes. Back yep. Exactly. Okay, cool. So now you're up to a plus eleven. Yeah. Oh, good lord. <laughs> All right, so who's next? I believe it's Kungus and Horus and Sindel and Hammy. Gerda's not taking it. Oh, she fell back amongst the party. She drew everybody together at the edge of the together, rise. Right. Mm -hmm. In a tight knit bunch. Like the nature goddess. Wait for the tentacle creature to attack. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're gonna you're gonna hold your action. Well, we're, are we within striking distance of any of the tentacles? No, you're not. Okay. Whoever has uh, you know um, range could, but it is withdrawing, right? Uh, well, kind of, or it's or, sort of. Yeah, what is it doing? Yeah, so you guys had the warriors had run up to the imprisoned. Uh, Gerda, the tangled Gerda, and Horus had hacked her free, and then, uh, you know, a few missile weapons and your spells had been blasted off against it. And then in the next round, um, you know, it, it's it's shriveling and smoking, and Gerda's sort of drawing the warriors back, and you're kind of forming this tight knit bunch at the edge of the at the edge of the uh, rise there. Exactly. So I think we were holding then, because if there's nothing for Horus or I to smash, All right. I don't think there's any reason in switching over weapons at this point, because I think the creature will come to us. Okay. Or Gib can just keep raining fire and brimstone here. And well, Has he tried fire yet? No, but he. did you see the damage he, he did? Not in, he's not in range to do flaming hands. Yeah, we don't want to be in range to do flaming hands. <laughs> he actually does not want to be. Yeah, yeah. He's feeling very frail these days. <laughs> it comes with age. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> or it comes with wisdom. So yeah, I think I think that we're all holding, right? To see what happens next, I yeah. guess, right? But I think Horace and I are unless, holding. Unless we want to just withdraw and or I think of, you know, or just see if uh I you know, Gib can just keep on well, whacking you've, it. Down. You've got it down to half. We're going to have to go past it at some point. Yeah, and it's it's a pit. It, it's going to suck there, us into it and eat there us. There is so. that. There is that building off in the yarn yonder that um, Gib just barely got a little bit of a an eye on that he sees that the path leads to a building so, yeah. out here. There's something. There's something down there. there. Path is down leading there. somewhere. Yeah, like right here. Yes. Yeah. Right yeah. there. I think we just gotta just go through this thing. Do it deal with it the old fashioned so, way. Yeah, so let's just so if we're gonna hold tight and see what happens in the next round to you know, so that Gib can unleash some more He can bring the artillery paint super, it's fine. Super, super All, right. Nature on him. All right, sure. So on the um on the creature's action it sort it like draws the tentacles sort of draw back and it sort of Rinks down into the into the earth. That's pretty cool how you're making it small. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can well, we still see it? You can't. Uh, you can see like a few. Like you can see some disturbance in the earth and like a few like small like little wavering tendrils, but nothing like what what you had faced moments moments before. Shall we kind of run past? Yep. Or chase it and try to lightning bolt it some more? Well, it's in the ground. I don't know that we can do much to it until it comes back out. Well, we won't know until we try, but we could always mm -hmm. run. So I guess what's probably going to happen is if we run, okay, and it passes its uh, will save, then it's yeah, going to pop back up, and we're going to be yep. in the same position. Correct. Um. Well, if it does, then you blast it and we'll do it again. But I say we get down that path. It's quick. a new. It's a new round. You guys have um, automatically won the initiative. So you're gonna. Are you gonna start? You're gonna follow the path. I think so. 
if 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 Gibbs Tolkien gonna, taught us anything, it's stay on the path. <laughs> <laughs> Gibbs gonna um, be looking out for any small tentacles that he can fire off on. Okay. So the tentacles that you see, kind of those that are sort of just still disturbing the earth and like out, sort of like like antenna almost. Right. They're they're like twig like in in their in their oh, no. size. They're not okay. they're not limb like. <clears throat> okay. Fair enough. It, um it's, so it's, this it's so not... you guys race to this point. Here's its will save to see if it can approach Gerda. It does, and it bursts Ooh, forth back out. this time even closer to you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, I knew it. Uh, yeah. Okay, well, so this go. isn't, uh, but it is going to take damage um, for closing within. God, come on, horse man, get us how this. Much, uh, how much damage is it going to do? Ooh. Six points El of damage. No, no. eleven. Oh, eleven. That's not, <laughs> not even funny. <laughs> <clears throat> oh boy, we really need this. Uh, we need this initiative. All right, here's the initiative. Can hear me boost an initiative? Oh, oh my! Oh. Let's see what you get, Horace. That's pretty. 20, tough. 20. That's a tough ask. What is no. your no? It, it, goes, uh, it goes first. It smashes in, and 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 it was like a when it comes <laughs> bursting out of the. It's like this. Uh, like a dirt <laughs> torpedo, <laughs> and it explodes right at Cindela's feet. Oh! And hits armor class a lot. Oh! It like throws her up into the air and wraps her up in like three or four tentacles. She's like fully entangled. <laughs> Is she like up in the air or on like, the ground? Yeah, like eight feet in the air. Ah. Gibbs just nodding, just nodding his head, just like we shouldn't have done this. <laughs> <laughs> so much for the charge. All right, um, that was the creature's action. What will you do? Horace is going stab, to stab, stab, stab. What is Horace is going to do? What free Sandella? How? How will you free your companion, Horace? Well, he's pretty darn sure that what he did to free Gerda is going to work again. Oh, you're uh -oh. going to try to cleave through the the, mm -hmm. the limbs? Come oh. on, Horace. Oh, yes. He has two attacks, so he's going to do it. Here comes the first one. Okay, it's, she's, so, she's so badly entangled, it's going to take two successes. Okay. This is going to hurt. Mm, the deed barely goes off. Uh, you need a 20. <clears throat> Do you want to burn a little, some luck? Horace has no luck to burn. Unlucky Horace. Unlucky Horace. And Unhammy. his next attack couldn't wouldn't hit, even if he hit a 14. Well, what's your crit range? Oh, yeah. Well, my crit range is 18 to 20. And you're throwing a D14, and you're getting uh -huh. a plus 3. It has to be so natural. That's, yeah. If you get a it natural, have to be a 14. if you get a 14, I'll let you have a hit. Okay. I will go for the second hit. All right. What do we get? Oh, 13. <laughs> One of the oh, 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 no luck to burn. All right. Yeah, who's no next? How about what's Cindella doing? Uh, Cindella is. <laughs> Hammy will burn a hammy will burn a luck if you want me to. Her normal mm. weapons are or her rapiers, which aren't going to help. Hold on, hold, hold, hold on. Hammy would have burned the luck with the. Uh, with Hammy the Hammy would have to burn two luck to make this to make oh. to make this work. Would have Gert? Would he? Would the warrior been able to chop her free? Yes, if Hammy burns if, two luck. I know Peter was doing other things, so that's why I'm giving you the. The, uh, no, the other things are done. I had to get Barb and the dog, yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah, and there was a that's why big nightmare at dog class, apparently. And oh. I, uh, oh, puppy schools. Oh my okay, god. Okay, so so <laughs> so Sindel will be freed if you burn the luck, right? Two points. Right? Two points. All right. So that puts so me to like a thirteen. Handy. Yeah, I will burn the two luck. Okay. 
Okay, so how much damage does Horus get to do? It's just the one attack, right? No, both attacks succeed because okay. um, Hammy burned the luck to let this. Oh, okay, right. Okay, so the first attack does 11 points of damage. Mm -hmm. And the second attack does 12 points of damage, so 23 points. Nice. Mighty Excellent. blows indeed. Well done. It was it was Hammy's luck that let him just hit the right spots every time. It did. It did. Oh boy. <laughs> well, Gerda and Hammy are coming in there and hitting the same thing to try and hit her free. So Gerda's taking her swing. All right. Go for it. Oh, that's a hit. How much damage does Gerda do? Oh, and it's a magic. It's my wonderful magic. Um, magic hammer. You bet it is. That's why hammer. it hit. That's why it hit. Ooh, I could even try and charm this thing. Ooh, no. I've actually, it didn't. No. It's a, actually it's a twenty-two. Is right. I rolled. Just, just, so. just kill it. We don't need to charm this one. There. Yes. Boom. And tell, point. show us how you defeat the this creature of the earth. Um, as Horus hacks that thing, it almost has Cinderella loose, and Gerda steps in and she takes a mighty swing. And this, it almost looks like the basilisk opens its mouth and it bites right, right where he had been, where Horus had been slicing, and it finishes it through, shattering just, just muck and goo everywhere. If this is, this isn't a tree anymore. This is a big tentacle thing, isn't it? Tentacle Ooh, how goo. Who how hente? Yes, very hente. Yes. Wow! All right, nice and I even had another. And I had another plus one to that. I, I forgot about. Woohoo! God bless oh, the yeah. magic weapons. There you go. Thank you, Hammy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, thank you. Hammy was very useful in that. <laughs> Hammy has been very, very useful. Mm -hmm. he, he got. It's, gift, always, it's uh, always good luck to have a hobbit along. It's always it is. good luck. They say, even though they can be annoying, but you put up with it. <laughs> Because of moments like this. And they eat a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. What about second breakfast? Eleven you know, season. <laughs> I was reading an alternate class where they they have a halfling feast master. It's a halfling bard, but he actually buffs the party by cooking food. <laughs> uh, uh, that's good. Whatever the party eats beforehand gives them bonuses for the day. Interesting. I thought it was very clever. Does anyone, very need, clever. does anyone need healing at this point? Cindella and Horus could use a. Cindella could use help. Uh, Horus needs a touch up. <laughs> All right, on Cindella. Oh, holy That's shit! That's a natural twenty, man. So uh, you get four well, dice. She's fine. Four dice. <laughs> she's fine. <laughs> holy crap! Even her hair is fine. <laughs> She's even clean. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, no more of that goo is on her. Okay, and you said Horace needs to be just yeah, touch up would be great. Ooh, it was almost a two. <laughs> you were you were rooting for it, I yes, sense I it. Was. That's <laughs> another goddamn four dice. <laughs> Actually that's five uh, is it four dice? Does that work? No, that? no, are you uh are you neutral? I'm fifth law uh I'm law. Okay, so that's four dice. Cool. I mean, it's not going to matter. 40-12 is a lot. <laughs> and I rolled Even pretty crappy rolls. on that, too. <laughs> I want to I wanna, okay. run a DCC wire, and I'm going to do a chaos wire, because I already have the figure painted for him when he gets to, like, fourth or fifth level. Anytime you want to join, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what are you guys doing besides spending some time uh, resting, recovering, and healing your wounds? Uh, we're poking around the creek range of the creature in the area, see if there's anything of uh, interest. All right. I mean, he's he's watched Gib. Gib kind of cuts through these things and pokes around and finds all kinds of interesting stuff. So <laughs> he went in on the action, huh? Hey. Learn where the loot is. Yeah, so what it, does this thing look like all, all busted up? Uh, well, Easy. it's it's Goopy. mostly like there's this large knot uh, from where many of the, the roots protrude. And this is kind of that that part that had burst up on, beneath Cindella. And um, 
Mm. And it's the, it, and it, and it, you know, the severing of the, of two of these primary roots, uh, and the and the and the and the mortal blow that Gerda delivered to the to the knot uh, is what finally s um, slew the beast. Now I haven't done the, the beast. Yet. So do these tentacles beast. are the? Are, does it seem like it's a? It's the tentacles are made out of like some type of uh, wood like thing, like it's been corrupted from um, wood, or is it like? Like more no, like, they're more like. Uh, so so Gib's gonna uh, give, try me an, to give me an intelligence check, Gib. Yeah, is it something natural? I guess is the question. Mm. That's been corrupted, or is it right? You know, uh, demonic. De demonic. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Ah, uh, yes. Holy crap! This is clearly a hell beast. <laughs> uh, the tentacles are more octopi-like. Than right, are, exactly. Then they are, yes. um, you know, you had first mistaken them for being like roots of grasses or trees right. or something like that, but no. Due to its green, green looking nature. It was more because of the dirt that was, you know, being thrown up around them that, that caused your, <clears throat> your mind's eye to, to see them that way. But, you know, now you see the true horror of this thing. Right. It's definitely it has these weird world, tiny world mouth. Lineage. It has these weird tiny mouths on the, you know, the inside of the tentacles that you the primary ones that you roll over. Mm. Mm. Red and teethy. Um, uh, what is in the assuming distance, what is what is that? Uh, that's just like some smoldering mists. Okay. Um, also, as you're sort of poking around this area, <clears throat> uh, you discover a camp, what looks like a um, a campfire, you know, a nicely made one. Or somebody, it looks like somebody had, you know, there's like a, a swale in the grasses and... Um, somebody uh, picked the wrong campsite. Yeah. <laughs> And a well laid um, and a well laid campfire with carefully placed stones and um, even a, a a small pile of of firewood um, nearby for this for this campfire. Any black and cloth? It, no, um, but go ahead and make an intelligence check, Gerda or Hammy. Uh, Hammy's better at this. And Gib would also like to um, try to ascertain if there was anything more. Uh, cutting out of the of the demon. Oh, of the creature. Like if it's if, of its teeth or you sure. know something you have magical like that. Use? Oh, sure, yeah. dude. I'm sure there's something. No, mm. Hammy only rolled a nine. Mm. Was that a luck or a uh, no. intelligence? Uh, you was oh. look, you was searching about for some for some scraps of black cloth, but you find nothing more than this carefully tended campsite. Uh, let's see. Um, what that what? you could scavenge from this beast? Make a luck check, Gib. Ooh, oh, nicely done. Lucky. It's a wizard. What do you expect? So deep in the pit, where the where you can see the the massive roots still there, the knot, you can see it's slowly starting to break down and decompose. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. It, as as since it's otherworldly, it's and it's lost its uh, power. Mm. It's no longer to able to live uh, in this existence. But you can see what looks like it's heartstone mm. beating. Mm. Could be useful. But you'd have to get down in that muck and the guck and the uh, <laughs> who knows what else to recover it. What will you do, Gib? Uh, so Gib will call out to the warriors, <laughs> to see, uh, or or the dwarf that he'll gladly uh, share in its worth. Uh, however, in his weakened state, he doesn't feel like he's. Uh, and you can able feel to do it. it. You can see it. It's radiating um, some magical. Uh, Energy. Oh, so Fidella asks you how much you're willing to pay for it. 
Well, he already said half, but he says, dwarf, oh. come look. Come look. You'll be more interested in this more than anybody. <laughs> demon heart, of course. I mean, no, sindel has got, got a demon rune on her hand, so she's pretty intrigued. All right. So how 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 far how deep into this hole is this? Uh, the pit that you're looking into is probably six to eight feet deep, and it's Holy like crap. this sludge and this muck of this like decomposing creature. It's like it's like it's like by the moment it's like falling apart even more and adding more to this like kind of slurry and soup down in the pit. <laughs> I would advise against it. Mm, it's too it's deep for me, I think. Too deep. Okay. <laughs> I'm only four feet tall. It's already over my head. So so Sindela's the dwarf... willing to go for it. Okay. What will you do, Sindela? Okay, even so... my spear, I don't think we could fish it out, so well I I'm thinking that she is going to um, do something similar to what Horace tried to do with his uh, crossbow earlier, but this time it's only a short range. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, um, go ahead, roll point. to hit. Okay. This is your one chance at it. I won't let you have another okay. of this trick that you're trying. All right. You know, always, it's got to be a so. new idea. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Uh, no, you fire the bolt and it just you know, hits the <laughs> edge of the mud pit. <laughs> and what if I were to burn disappears. luck? Um, you do get two points of, of luck. You would, I you get a... No, yeah. he gets to die. He gets a full die. As a oh, thief. full die. How many points of luck would you like to burn? You need to... How, what did you need to get to hit that creature? You're trying to pierce point. its heart stone with the with your crossbow bolt. Does that give you any indication of what your target number would be? <laughs> 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 yeah. He says. He says subtly. Yes. How many points of luck will you burn, Cindella? Let's see. <laughs> She's level four, so each one is a d6. If the creature to hit was 20, then its heart stone is probably a 25 at least. He didn't he did math. <coughs> he's factoring right mm -hmm. now. Um, while he's factoring, uh, I'll pick bookies. up in the uh, the the firewood that was already collected. Oh, uh-huh. We'll wrap that up and take that with us. Oh, you want to take the bundle of fire? Okay, note it down on your character sheet, please. Oh, heck yes. A question about the uh, campsite. Does it look like it was used or set up and then not used? Like set up for someone to come to, or was it used and then just left? Um, who's like, that? is there a fire burning? Gerd is checking it out. I mean, was there a, Gerd, was there... make a luck check. <laughs> oh, Hammy's doing it then. If it's oh, a no, luck Gerd check. is doing it. Ah. And he already did this. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, um, right. oh yes! Oh my yes. God! Yes, it 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 clearly was set up and used. Um, you know, you can see there's lots of ash and coal within the in the in the campsite itself. You can see, in in fact, where where a, a man must have lay, uh, or a humanoid shape at least. Mm -hmm. um, and you see some tracks. In fact. Mm. You spy some tracks. I'll mark them out for you on the map. <laughs> Way to go, Gerda. Going to the little mm -hmm. building, probably. But so, what happens with the uh, Hearthstone? Let's let's conclude <laughs> that. Story. Let's figure out the Hearthstone, and they, <laughs> and they run off into the, uh, in towards hmm. this tree to the south of the campfire ring. Okay. So, uh, uh, so yes, what's happening, Cindella? Have you burned luck? No, Your Cindella's not going to burn luck. Different idea. Oh, different idea. So, all right, cross off the bolt. Yep. And all the other bolts um, that you fired. <clears throat> okay. Um, so is this heart like, um, so you said it's like six to eight feet down. Is it like just a pit that goes down and there's goop all around the pit? or yeah. and it's filled with this muck and the slurry. It's slowly filling even more. In fact, okay. the heart stone, you can see it sort of sinking just barely glinting its kind of white pearlescence. Um, so rate. who has a rope? 
Get, get yeah, I was about to say, up. someone's going to like, someone tie the rope around uh, Cinderella and she'll jump and grab it and everyone pull her out. <laughs> she is not going to smell good for quite a while. Okay. Uh, not like we're all sleeping together. <laughs> but you are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all say. right, make a luck check, Cinderella. Okay. All right. She has the black dagger ready, too. All right. Awesome. This here be demon dust. She made it. Okay. Um, so you plunge down into the muck and it burns. It sears your flesh. Uh, you take. I could have told you this. <laughs> uh, I was hoping the, the rune would do something. It's glowing brightly. That's what it's doing. Yeah, but it might be like but negative it might... to it. And you take five points of damage. Okay. Which cannot be healed this day. <sighs> All right. Ow. Well, hopefully this heartstone's worth it. I'm sure yeah, I'm worth a couple copper. So now it's time to pull me up. Uh yeah, and you and you easily make Okay. Cool. Uh, so you're clutching this heartstone, and it's pearlescent in its in its composition and its makeup, but it's like this weird lumpy rock kind of shape, and it's as big as two palms. And you present it to the wizard, and it's just like, and you can just feel the 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 magic radiating off of this thing. Out of curiosity, is the rune in my hand like at all reacting to this stone? Um, you, the rune in your hand is is glowing, maybe mm -hmm. more brightly than okay. it was before. But you know, it just it's it's hard to look at that rune, <laughs> the branding on your palm. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna go check out this tree while these guys are committing suicide. <laughs> yeah, I will go with you. All right, You're, the the wizard and the and the and the thief are like climbing out of the pit with this 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 treasure grasped in her in her under her arm, and the wizard's like greedily looking after it, like. <laughs> <laughs> and the dwarf and <clears throat> Congress and Gerda go tr following these tracks, which lead to this tree, and they. And they lead right up to the tree, and then they, and they're, but they're, that's it. There's nothing else. That's, they Look stop. Up. So, so Gibble forces attention back to the group and, and say, if, if you want Sindelity, you can hold on to it until we, another time when we can ascertain more about it, or I'll hold on to it, whichever um, you choose. You, go ahead and make an intelligence check now, Gib. Looking up, Gerda and Horace, you see nothing but this this um, blasted tree. You have no idea what this thing does, Gib. Absolutely none. <laughs> All but you, you, but you like it. <laughs> it's wonderful and amazing, but you have no, it's just, it's it's absolutely beyond your human capacity to understand. Yeah. Gibble, 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 <laughs> examine it more tomorrow. No, ever. Ever. <laughs> okay. It's just like, it's like you look at it and it's like, your mind, Constantly, your mind, yeah. it's like a HP Lovecraft turns me into a toddler horror reaction. You're just like, you can't even look at it. It's, it's so brilliant and amazing. Yeah. Vista's like, but only Vista's, huh? <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> Is this like the Bible? No. No. Well, no. Sort of. Sort of. <laughs> Gosh, okay. It's so good. Again, Gib Gib focuses his mind and catches up to the group. Mm. Sindela tucks the and Sindela. I mean, you're you're filthy and disgusting oh, I bet. And, and foul, besmirched. And on top of it, you got this gook on you. Mm. Which she is getting off of her, and that may mean undressing parts of herself. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's just there's no. I mean, there. There's no stream nearby. I mean, there's no. No water. No helping. <laughs> mm -hmm. At least you don't smell like a fish. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's no. She smells like demon guts. I don't know. No, she she smells like she smells like bile. Mm. So anyway, so uh, 
at the tree i'm looking up the tr there's the nothing dirty. there's nothing above the tree i mean the tree is bare of of uh, there's nobody leaf. in the tree right nobody hanging there's from nobody, the tree yeah, hanging no from. corpses or gibbets uh, or now you as you continue down the path I'm assuming that's what's happening. Is or, yes. Oh, I thought this was the tree that... No, the tree's over here. It's a it, little orange. It. Okay, so let's say we didn't go all the way down. <laughs> I see. Now you're right. So does anybody want to climb the tree to maybe see well, if let's look around anymore? and see. Yeah, Desert. it's like... I mean, the, the tracks you were like... Once you found them, they were clearly easy to follow, and they like... They they almost march right up to this tree and then they're like, and then they like as if the tracks would go directly into the tree, but there's nothing more. Just so the tree. Gib's gonna look like for a dryad or something or a secret door. Yeah, Gib's gonna look for a door. Do tell you. Yeah. Go ahead and make an intelligence check, Gib. Oh, he, natural twenty. Right. I mean, it's. Wow. Absolutely. It's as if there should be a door here, but there's nothing. It's a tree. It's as if almost somebody walked into the tree. Mm -hmm. So Gib's like, gonna look like at a kind of like a gate or a like they uh, opened something there and walked through. Like it. a door or a portal. Door. That's <laughs> it. That's like it. Gib knows it. It's a portal. Mm. So Some, somebody Gib opened a portal here. Mm. So Gib will touch the tree on mm. the on the area where uh, the the footsteps lead to mm -hmm. to see if it's uh, illusionary. No, it's not illusionary. It's a true tree. I mean, it's withered and it's seen better days. Almost like a <clears throat> fire had raged through this area, but there's no ash or cinders about. And does this tree look the same as the other trees around it? It does. Yeah, very larch like. And there's no keyhole. There's nothing that could be. There's no or... door, aperture, operating mechanism. But you do know that this was there. There was some sort of portal that was created here, and whoever made these tracks must have passed through that portal. Mm -hmm. The how you open that portal, or the that's that's a mystery. Mm -hmm. So does our priestess of Ildivar know anything about traveling through trees? Any holy scriptures or stories or? mystic arts known but not yet known to her hmm. i don't know <laughs> is that an intelligence role uh sure you can make an intelligence check <laughs> work with me here Gerder. work with me here uh, no okay i've never heard of anything of the sort it's not natural. It's not natural. No, <laughs> tree to tree. Just through class on that one. Okay. Hmm. I'm, pretty on sure, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure was a great great ranger. Gib Gib's absolutely certain about the portal, but he's bewildered about how it opened. He can't sense anything. Or well, they could have had a scroll, or could have had something on them. It had nothing sure, to do with the tree. Have been, um, or it could have been some druid magic or something. How? Uh, Who's the best tracker out of the group? Uh, is pretty good at it. Gib's gonna Gib's gonna point it to the group about speculating like how long ago these footprints were laid down. Hmm. The tracks are fresh. Oh crap! Within the last day. Yeah, within days. They're not aged. I'll be right back with you guys while you plan on your read his notes. Movie. Quick, look at his notes. Somebody mm -hmm. look behind the screen. Players die here. <laughs> ah, crap. It always says that. <laughs> so either we, my guess is it's either a dimension door or something like what a dryad or satyr does, right? They can pass through because they become part of trees or brownies and leprechauns can do that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's, that's true. That's why Gibbs <sighs> speculating if it looked different. If this were a DCC module, it could be King of Elfland magic because the King of Elfland gives the tree walk, forest walk spell, but it's a D&D &D module, so it's probably more like a dryad. Unfortunately, Congress, being a dwarf, doesn't really know much about these things. I was hoping our priestess would know more. Our pseudo-druid. I rolled a nine, and her title is druid. 
Yeah, I think you were asleep in class when they were talking about the creatures of the It's forest. not a class. It's a nature. You just wake up one morning and boom, there you are. It's like Trump <laughs> University. I hope clearly for you it was. It means nothing. <laughs> All right. What will you guys what will you do? We can call out and yep, see if the creature could come. Yeah, we could do that, sure. What? Do these tracks? Um, do these tracks look human? Yes, they're like a, like a, like a man's boot. Okay. I think we should Probably continue not down the path. Wait, well, who are the guys that were that were supposed to be the wardens we're watching here? The scions of Kilbrana sent you to this um, to this area to investigate and discover what foul. What foul magics forces. are about? Yeah, what foul and, and magics are? They are druids, here. correct? Mm. Uh, wizardy yeah. guys. They, they believe in a certain order and balance of natural things, but it's more like man's order. Okay, so they are not druids. Okay, they're Darwinists. <laughs> Hmm. Okay. What are you guys doing? Hmm. I think we should continue down the path. So Gib is going to actually um, do what the dwarf uh, suggested and actually uh, call out in front of the tree, like, "Hello." Uh, yeah. <laughs> what, are you, what are you calling <laughs> out? Anybody that uh, is here, um, we're friendly, and please present yourself. We're friendly. We just killed this demon creature here. Trust us. Well, if you're hiding from the demon creature, we're good news. Mm -hmm. Make a personality check. No. No. There's, there's like, there's a faint, there, there's a weird flutter of wings. Um, you know, it's like a like a crow um, uh, lights from, from a nearby tree, but that's all. And it's sort of startling because you haven't seen, when you guys came into this area of the forest, you hadn't seen any animal life, um, though you though it had been fairly prevalent before, you know, like walking through the woods sort of thing. Sindela will present or like lift up the demon heart and say, we're friends. We killed the demon who is infecting your land. Yeah, all of this. I mean, it just it's just deathly silent. Cricket, cricket. Or there would be crickets if there were crickets. There crickets. There crickets. <laughs> but there aren't any crickets. Which makes it really weird. The old mm -hmm. <clears throat> the ugly old wizard uh, drove it off. Mm -hmm. Trying to speak with it. Afraid so. Should have had our priestess be... talk about talk it. All right. Well, time to proceed. I think mm -hmm. so. Yep. Okay. So you as you proceed down the path, you you find <clears throat> this weird structure um that's like across the across the entire path. And it's these this weird kind of circular structure made of like twisting roots and um twisting black roots and it's about 10 feet tall and maybe about 30 feet in um in radius so i think that's 60 feet across mm -hmm. yep mm -hmm. so kind of like a root version of a stargate kind of a thing um does it look like a hut like a large hut yeah almost like, like a, a hut but there's no roof house. you can see uh, oh, it's just it's like, like a it's like a circular wall of these black roots. Oh, okay. So we can't necessarily see the top of it, but it doesn't look like that. There's like an overhanging of something. Yeah, there's no well, there could, dome or, could not be. or some sort of closure that apexes at the top here. It looks like it might be hollow. You don't see I'll any. You don't see any. Um, Doorways, doors, or gates, or anything like that on it. Do you want to? Do you want to completely circumnavigate it? 
sure. Yeah. Well, Gib, Gib suggests that to the group. Yeah. So walking completely around this structure. Some uh, kind of enclosure. You don't, there's no, there's no uh, openings, um, you know, through these twisted uh, roots. Does it look like it's, uh, um, it's, uh, it's climbable? Uh, it looks like it's climbable, sure. So is it moving? No, it is not moving. So it's like some sort of circular structure made out of roots? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Think so about Gib it like maybe like a circular wall, like a palisade mm -hmm. almost. Gib Gibble, Gibble approach the wall and look but at it. No closer. obvious opening. Okay. Being All right, so you're going to, you're going to, as you, as you approach it, <laughs> Let's see, do I have a handout for you for this thing? No, I do not. Um, uh, the roots begin to part, like they they like pull back, and it's like almost like this tunnel into um, into this wall appears, and the and the wall is quite thick, and you can't quite see beyond it. Um, give me just a second. I'm just skimming the notes. I'm sure it's safe. Yeah, as you walk it's, mm -hmm. it's, all, back and it's all shrouded by mist. <clears throat> but on the inside? Like yeah. Past, past. yeah past. So like this, the, the roots sort of pull back as you, as you kind of walk towards it. And it like pulls open into like kind of a rough opening that's at least man size. And, and it's, and it's quite deep. You can, you know, it's at least five, 10 feet deep. It's, um, uh, you know, leading into this, into this, into this wall of roots. Oh, okay. So beyond it, it's, so it's almost like a tunnel of roots now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's like mm -hmm. an opening with this, this tunnel through these roots that go towards the center of this, of this thing. It, Gib's going to cast, um, Ekam's mask. All right. Go ahead and make your spell check. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, 16, so that passes. So he'll have uh, Infravision now. Oh, Infravision, interesting. Oh, Hammy's got Infravision. So does the dwarf. <clears throat> so so Gib will proceed another couple feet. Uh, and, into the uh, yeah, into tunnel? Yeah, into it, just slightly into it, just to, just to get a... Okay, you can feel the... On. The roots sort of closing up behind you, but just because you're standing in the sort of the threshold, I guess you'd say of that tunnel, mm -hmm. uh, there is. Uh, okay, I have my familiar. Uh, they, you can feel them sort of trying to close back behind you, but right. because you're still standing on the threshold, they haven't quite fully closed, and peering through the mists with your vision with your infravision you can you can make out two figures beyond the mist <clears throat> but other than you but you but so he's who going they so, are what they might so, be you can't so tell. gib's gonna experiment real quickly and back up and see if the roots um come apart again how far uh, are you backing away like uh, two feet um, so you back away out of the beyond yeah, the beyond the threshold, yeah. and the the roots again open up to form this like this passage. Yeah. For you. So he, he feels that it's does it's not trying to entrap him. It's mm -hmm. just really a parting for some as his force or his human or whatever it is could mm -hmm. be anything, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sandella will join Gib um, at the edge of this and potentially go in with him. Oh, I think we should all stick together and go in together. Yeah. That's more my thinking, is we don't split the party here. Okay. okay. Unless the party's already split. Right. Exactly. Give me um, give me just <clears throat> five minutes or two. Give me like two or three minutes to skim my notes. And then I... Uh, so let me tell you what happens. So the party... Ah. Um, uh, piles through this gate of roots. <laughs> uh, give me a marching order really quickly, if you wouldn't mind. I know it's Gib and Horace leading the way. Dindella. Sorry, 
Ibn Sindela leading the way. Mm -hmm. Who's next? Oh, you put Horus right behind him. And mm -hmm. Horus, and you can go two by two. Okay, put Gerd in the second rank, and Hammy yeah. and uh, Congress. And Congress, Congress bring up the rear. Yep. All right. So we don't get Perfect. rolled up too badly. Perfect. The short people will be the ones that live. <laughs> they can see further behind us, too. Mm. And I brought firewood, so. <laughs> Good thinking. <laughs> we're gonna be we're gonna be grateful for that. I sense it. Or someone's really pissed that I took their firewood. I'll be right back. All right. I'll be right here. I hear a train a coming. It's coming mm -hmm. around the bend. I ain't seen the sunshine since I don't know when. <laughs> so what are we going to do about the professor? He's coming to the convention. That's a good sign. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I was talking with uh, Partek about some of the organization stuff about like some cancellations and I was like, oh shit, we better check with John to see if he's still. Now, are you, in, are you okay. in charge this year or is it just the handoff year? I'm just, I'm, it's just the handoff year. So I'm just watching. Yeah, Dave's he's done, done a, Dave's done a lot of work for a lot of years. I sure yeah. appreciate everything he puts in. Yeah. He does. Do you guys still need games, Aaron? Uh, they're like 75. I don't think so. <laughs> okay. So I don't need to, wanted to run something. You certainly could. Mm-hmm. I mean, we'd, we'd try to make room for you, but it might be in a weird time. I'm playing games with my friends. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll just do RPG stuff this year then. Yeah. Um, guy, um, guy, uh, oh, can I think it's okay. It's nine o'clock. Fullerton. <laughs> okay. I'm back. Fullerton. I want to say. Yeah. Your friend who wrote the last module yeah, we played. I might be wrong. <laughs> For some reason, I'm not, I don't know why I'm blanking on his last name. He's going to run that AD&D awesome. module, so that that could be fun. Mm. He's a he's a good game master. Okay, then we go crash on his stuff then. Um. Yeah. All right. All right. Let me set the scene. So uh -oh. the parties like y'all die. This this tunnel, this this tunnel of roots, and as the last of you crosses over the threshold, it starts to to close behind you. And as the as the as the trailing members of the party like call out, they're closing. The mists part before you, and you and you can see into the center of this this sixty foot ring of roots. Um, two figures. One of them was wearing these robes that are adorned with this um, gold filigree on the shoulders and that run down the sleeves. They're black, um, black robes with this gold embroidery across the shoulders and down the sleeves and across the back and down the front in sort of this weird waving pattern. Um, that's the first that's the first figure you see. And he steps back and raises his hands and the. The second figure, the second man, is uh, arraigned in uh, a warrior's garb, and he he unleashes this, he draws this black blade that bursts in the fire, black flames um, radiating from this from this blade, and you can see behind them these these crawling figures of bronze, and they stand up, fierce vis visage visages on their faces and behind them behind this motley crew this man in warbs and this warrior with this black fiery blade are these <clears throat> um spindly dead trees and impaled in the branches of these two spindly dead trees are the figures of two men and one of them looks down and says brothers and dies impaled in the branches of this tree says brothers to us 
Yes, calls out to mm. you and then expires. Let's see if anybody is surprised. Five I'm not at all. The sign they are clearly eyes. surprised, so you'll have the initiative. Let me give you the hand a handout. <laughs> <laughs> We're all gonna die. I think they're the guys who are in the <clears throat> trees are signs of Cobranus. See, you're right. So again, there's these bronze-looking things that have like ugly faces that were between the dying behind trees. the two men. <clears throat> behind, the two. yeah. Oh, okay. So, so the 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 dude that just died is in the middle of sword flaming sword dude and yeah, no, he's up in the tree. I'll, I'll give you guys oh. a I'll give you guys a sketch here in just a minute. Okay, let me just show you the. Um, the handout so here you can see the the warrior with his black flaming blade and these are the creatures of bronze that are uh, that are crawling oh. on the ground behind they him look like trolls or yeah, something. they look like old D trolls mm -hmm. and there's and the they 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 spindling the these spindly black trees with the with the uh yep. with the bodies with the impaled on them impaled. and they're wearing um black uh black garments Okay. Well, it's a good thing he's not a guardian because we'd be really worried. So he's just a guardian. So I think we target the uh, non heavily armed guy first because he's probably the spellcaster. Probably. Uh, we, all these bronze guys are smiling, and that worries me. I am going to take us to. This, well. Yeah, I'll take us to the sketch pad because this will be a little easier to do. <clears throat> Big battle. Oh, I think it is indeed going to be a big uh, battle. Let's see. <clears throat> Before we do that, let's do a few other things. Okay. Um, yeah. So the guys, the guys turn towards you. Um, but it's almost like, what are you doing? And, and the, the man in robes steps forward and says, what are you doing here? You guys have the, the initial an answer. <laughs> I've just occurred to me. Do we even have an answer to that? I think our answer is uh, crossbow bolts and uh, sword hacks. <clears throat> Are you going to draw the? the, the... Uh, if we go to combat, I will. <laughs> we are here to cure the wood. We are here to bring back the balance of nature. Who are you? And it, that's at the point where the warrior whips out his black blade and he goes. <laughs> and bursts into flame into this black flame i'm gonna think he's not friendly to the cause oh, i'm spoiler alert you're right so, <laughs> yeah. are we are we now rolling for initiative Great, uh, you, guys have, initiative. you guys have the first initiative, so I'm just okay. pulling together a, a, quick, um, sure. a quick sketch so that we have a, a frame of reference because mm -hmm. there's going to be a lot going on mm -hmm. um, oh. here with the six of you. <clears throat> um, let's see here. So I just want to have something. Sure, that... absolutely. Yep, take, take a minute or two, three or four, could draw it up. Right. Yeah. Not We're alive bad. still, so. Mm -hmm. Barely. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> Barely. <laughs> We're... That so is, is, there, is there a roof to this place? Is there or, a what? Is there a roof? Is there a, 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 the tent? Ah, yes. Interesting. You look up and you see that the tendrils are slowly, like, closing above you, like in this weird dome. Huh. The roots are closing above you, and the and the roots have closed behind you. Mm. 
Good thing we can make a lot of fire. Be right back. Yeah, good thing. And and, and uh, Gib's good at fire. I got lots of fuel, Gib. We may need you to make some big fire. All right. You guys can drag your figures onto the board from your character sheets, which should be defaulted to that way. Just set the quick um, tokens mm -hmm. for the others. Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. So where is my token on this thing? It's under bio. From your, from your character sheet, um, from, the, from the journal area, you can just drag the... Uh, why did that snap to the grid? There we go. I'll do it for you, Brian. Okay, I just was trying to figure it out. So you just go to. Oh, I just drag it over. Oh, I just drag the to Brian, your character, and then you drag. Okay. Congress was, onto the map. I was just looking at the actual character sheet itself. Hmm. What do you drag from the character sheet? Just your name <laughs> onto the map, and it will. Push it onto the. Um... Mm. Oh, I see. That's a big dwarf. He's just closer. Big. Although I don't have. He, he jumped. He jumped really high, so he's closer <laughs> to us. Yeah. We're still there. We're still missing Gib. There's Gib. No, that's Gerda. Oh, Hemi's huge. <laughs> now he's small. There we go. Why do we get the feeling these are not nice people? Because they're not. All we said is we we're here to restore the force, and they object clearly. Yeah. That makes them the bad people. I sense a bolt of blue. I sense a lot of stabby stabby, some fire, some lightning, a few crossbow bolts, maybe some demon ichor. Some lightning strikes. Mm -hmm. A lot of lightning strikes. Yeah, Ethan, I think you're on mute. You're right. You're right. I was on mute. We still need Gibbs' figure. Uh, that's Gibbs' problem right now. <laughs> <laughs> Only because I'm trying to get this all set up for you guys. Sure. Okay. Um, oh, he doesn't have a character sheet. Oh, there he is. Okay. Yeah, I do not have edit rights to my own token yet, so I can't move him. I'll fix all that for you. It's fine. Just letting you know when we get to it. I'm thinking combat plan. Have Sindela and Horus swap places. Fire a volley of crossbow bolts. Probably have Gerda and Gibbs switch places too. Mm, let's see. Well, right now you've got Hammy and Congress in the back, so we're going to have to move out. Well, I need to move out, probably move up front. Yeah, we don't have a. That's right, we're not in the order, are we? No, we're not in order right now. Well, yeah, hopefully I can get some chain here. lightning going here, and then go chain lightning. Yeah, oh, exactly. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but don't oh, you cast your Ekum's mask already, so you have a plus three. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. we'll we'll have to figure out how long that's more than going to be going. Uh, that's this. oh, you cast it when you came into the. Uh, he did yeah, before he came into the portal. Or the smart. Yeah, he was Ekum'd out. Would. <laughs> I, I got it. <laughs> I'm thinking maybe we should just pass by this enclosure and not, not bother the inhabitants. 
We should have done it just like powder just around just the just outside and just light it. <laughs> and let it up. Walk yeah, away. Exactly. See you later, guys. It's efficient. Yeah. But there's trolls too, and that bothers me. I don't like trolls. Bronze trolls. That's worse. Well, the good news is we've got oil. We've got fire. Mm. But I sense they may not go down very quickly. Bronze trolls. Well, bronze uh, conductive. <laughs> I think that that does give you four targets, and, since and it the does say blast stone to bits and melts metal. Excellent! That's a wonderful description. I say we pump that thing up to the max. Pump up the jam, up the jam. Right, everybody jam. should be able to move your characters. You can go ahead and move them into a rough marching order. So we should, uh, should we fall into the march order that we were in? We still need we still need Gib. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're missing Gib. Yeah. You fix that. Pump. It was a random Gib character. Oh, he's got a bow. He's got a bow or something. I remember. Mm -hmm. There he is, tiny Gib. He's just far zero away. feet tall. Ah, oh, he was with you. Yes, he was in the front. So, all right, that's roughly the. This area is roughly sixty feet across. <clears throat> so we're looking at like five foot squares, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, just making sure I understand the. Well, it shows forty, but it'll work. It's close yeah. enough. Well, it's probably closer to forty because you have what five ten feet of inner radius, so mm -hmm. or of actual okay. branch radius. So this yep. works. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, so you guys have the initiative. What will you do? Horus and Sindela are going to switch places and unload two crossbow bolts. All right, you and, all can move um, them and do what you will do. OK. The only reason I say that, Ethan, is because I'm trying to juggle a bunch of other stuff on this side. Oh, yeah, so. no worries. I'm just telling you what I'm doing. Perfect. And they're unleashing their crossbow bolts at um, the wizardy type and not the heavily armored dude. All right. Yeah. Good I idea. I don't want him getting spells off. Yeah, Ham, Ham you'll shoot his at the wizardy oh, type too. Well, yeah, let's let's all get our turns taken care of though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go in order. You guys have the initiative, so do what you'll do. Go ahead, okay. Ethan. Roll some dice. Roll really well. That's my advice. All right. Here's some bellows. <laughs> Oh, that, that was 20. what I like to see. And that's Cindela's crit. Oh, she crits. With the Shot crossbow. the wizard in the <laughs> eye. <laughs> uh, and now what is her crit table? Uh, three for thieves, right? I'll look it up. I, I got the right. Oh, I wonder if this is a... Uh, a, a um... D16 on table two. Table two. Uh, does what is it, Mike? Plus two for luck. Oh, I just Gib just had a really quick revelation that this might be a uh, summoned from the multiverse warrior. So, ah, interesting. Um, what did you roll for the crit, Ethan? I rolled a four on table two. Four, four is blow to chest, staggers foe. You can make an immediate free attack. So GM interpret that one no, for a crossbow was, bolt. No, Sindela will tell us how she does okay. that. Sindela fire takes aim and fires a crossbow bolt, and she sees that the wizard kind of like staggers back and just immediately throws another bolt in and just launches it. All right, just does a quick fire, firing from the hip, mm -hmm. <laughs> as if you were exactly. a gunslinger. There you go. From a different era. 13 on that one. I don't know if that hits. Uh, I will tell you the AC in a moment. <clears throat> okay. And you need to roll damage for your first one. Mm, yeah. Damage for the first shot. It, so, nice, nice way to start it, though, Ethan. I'm telling you, rolling a 20. Yeah. 
-hmm. We needed that. I don't like flaming swords. They freak me out. Oh, I might like to have it after he's done. After he's done taking <laughs> it or is when I take up a flaming sword. That's different. If it's ours, it doesn't freak me out. Um, how much damage total did you do? Uh, one point for the first one, and then... I don't know the AC of the wizard, but uh, second oh, attack right. is a 13. Oh, right. So we're just trying to give you an AC target, and that's mm -hmm. what we have to calculate for We you only did one know. point on a crit? That's kind of heartbreaking. It is heartbreaking. It is. It really is. Yeah. The crit was the quick fire. Um, let's see. I need to be there. All right, and sorry. Um, okay. Let's see. I didn't expect you guys to um, enter this area. Ha <laughs> 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 ha! Got you off guard. He thought we would be smarter. Never <laughs> 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 oh, go into the evil room. No, that, that, they're not going to be dumb enough to do that. <laughs> You just don't know how dumb we are. Yeah, when he's talking to the other GMs, they're dumb. Him and, him and Guy. <laughs> oh. Well, we're here for answers. This seems like a logical place to get them. We may have to ask them before we kill everybody, though. Did this room ever get play tested? No, no one was stupid enough to go in there. <laughs> <laughs> All the parties avoided this one. <laughs> well, there is some... Why is there a level 10 dragon in the middle of this? Well. It's also a quarter to 10, Aaron. If you want to pause tonight here, too, you could. I think that might be wise. Let's just do that. I, I've captured the damage that was, that was done by... <laughs> the one. <point. laughs> oh, it was the armor class question that we had, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. it was just the armor class. Um, uh, you're looking for a twelve, so that second one will hit. <clears throat> All right, you so want me to just roll the damage real quick? Sure, sure. Here's the second bolt. There you go. Five. A little better. Six points total. So it was just a quick bang, bang. Dunk, dunk. You actually heard like a gunshot go off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's that fat. From somewhere in the multiverse. Bam. What the heck was that? All right. Well, good session tonight, guys. Um, and we'll just drop us back onto the main map and we'll just have a chat about hits and misses. How about for Congress? Would you like to start? Um, sure. Excuse me, no real misses tonight, I think, which is nice. I didn't get my shield cloven into by my party, so that, that's a win. You don't have one. <laughs> exactly. Don't need this anymore. <laughs> well, no, I'm definitely finding out the spear isn't working as well for him, so I may have to do something else longer term for him. But no, everything's going pretty good. Okay, cool. How about um, Ethan, Horace, and Sindela? Hits or misses for tonight? Uh, hit with Sindela's quick fire. That was pretty cool. Mm. Um, I did not expect that, but that's very in character for her eighteen agility. Absolutely, yeah, that was really that was really well done. Um, uh, hit that we managed to pull the demon heart out of the muck, and oh. that we and that Horus did with Hammy's luck sliced that thing to bits. Um, I didn't really have any misses tonight. I don't think. Cool, cool. No misses for you tonight. Wonderful. Yeah. Uh, Peter, Garrett, and Hammy. Uh, I think it, it's happened before, though. I think we've had some really good teamwork tonight. That just, mm -hmm. I really like that. I like it when, <clears throat> like you used to see on the A team, I love when a plan comes together. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> sort of mm-hmm. the race to Gerda's rescue and then the fall right. and the at the edge of the trail. Right. And the banishment spell driving the the cre- the cre- the creature of the earth before you. Right. And then and the two of us smashing in there to get the last wound on it. Mm-hmm. Right. That was pretty powerful. Yeah, you right. guys made short work of that very large creature. <laughs> <laughs> We had some lucky rolls to offset some mm-hmm. of our shitty rolls. Yeah. Lucky rolls and you know the banish spell just brought all the really important bits together so we could just whack it all at once. Banish has worked out for us a couple times. It has. It has. It has. You have it has. some demonic creatures from the from the from the nether realms and having that in your arsenal has been invaluable. Done. Yeah, I'm a little sad I didn't get cur- uh, remove curse, but I don't think uh, level three remove curse or level two remove curse would be enough to help us in this scenario. But I am looking forward to find out what bolt of blue does. I want to see. Oh, you haven't fired that off yet? No, I'm going to fire it against these guys. And I also have spiritual weapon. I think this is the perfect time to see how that does. That's basically I. It's Vorpal Blade is what it is. You you set a hand weapon next to you, and it fights alongside of you. Oh, wow. That's very cool. Or more yes. like Dancing Sword. Yeah, a lot like Dancing Sword. So I think, it, I think it'll be a, a really fun visual. And, you know, and I'm going to intone, may Ildavar fight beside me. You know, and <laughs> you yes. just see that. Oh yeah, this whole this whole thing has just been one one long comic book adventure after another. A stick and a giant acorn come together and fuse together, and then it starts hitting people. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. How about for Mike and Gib? Any hits or misses for tonight? Uh, Gib's still alive, but we cut the session short, so it is what it is. So we're he coming, may not be. We're, right, we're coming up right on time. Don't be too disappointed because this is quite the epic fight that you guys are gearing up for mm-hmm. um, as demonstrated by the quick fire start i mean yeah that was that rolling a 20 in your first shot that was nice let's hope that's what ha- carries through next week yeah cool well for me i think it was the um the opening of the scene with the uh, with the runes trying to figure out what was going on with the tree i thought that was really fun and entertaining then the bursting of the creature from beneath the earth and the new the new miniature that i got to show off and how it <laughs> rose and shrank. nicely painted nicely yeah. painted yeah, yeah. I, I have a i have a scale for all all of its various states so it's really helpful um and the heartstone the uh mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was a nice little bonus. That was a nice little touch. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was that was for me that was fun. Now now I think that um you know, like I said, you guys have geared up for this this epic fight here. So it's gonna I think next week we'll open with a bang. Oh mm-hmm. Liter- literally I think it will. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You heard the beginning of the bang and you're gonna hear the end of it next week. Right. Right. All right. Well, cool, guys. That was a lot of fun tonight. Definitely. Uh, I guess I'll catch up with you all soon. Okay, guys. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate it. Good night. Definitely. Well run.